Okay, I am going to go over the Zoom instructions for the audience. If you'd like to speak during public comment, please use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. When it is your turn to speak, a panelist will provide speaking access. You will receive a notification to unmute yourself. At that point, please unmute your microphone and proceed with your comment. After you, you have provided your comment, um, your speaking capabilities will be disabled. All right, housekeeping taken care of. Today is Monday, October 18th, 2021. I'm officially calling this meeting of the Sonoma County Advisory Redistricting Commission to order. Welcome everyone, welcome public, welcome staff and commissioners. And as always, thank you for your commitment, your dedication, your time to this process. Before we get down to business, I also want to first introduce um, Eric Koenig's chauffeur. Um, I don't know if I see him here, but he is from the 5th District, and he will be joining the commission for the remainder of our time. So welcome, Eric. I know your expertise and your knowledge of the county will help us immensely uh, from here on out. Um, as I've done at the start of all of our meetings, I will begin today's meeting by reminding the community, the public, that this is the first time the Sonoma County um, that we've assembled a commission to oversee the redistricting process. Commissioners and staff are, as we know, entirely new to this process, um, and we're doing our very best to get it right. Um, be patient with us, but we are trying to be as inclusive, as welcoming, and as transparent as possible. Um, and also for the public, it's important to know that the um, role of the commissioners, uh, that our job is to oversee a process that will engage participation in the redistricting process. So your voice really does matter. Uh, last winter, the Sonoma County Board of Supervisors formally established the Advisory Redistricting Commission, the ARC, to assist with the redrawing of our new district boundaries. Um, and that's what we are doing. On today's agenda, um, we will begin the process of examining draft maps that represent the theme from public testimony and um, comments. So what do I mean by theme? Um, so far, we've received a lot of input, uh, some with overlapping concepts and ideas. So as you can imagine, there are maps and comments and ideas that have um, that sort of express the same intent that embody the same common themes. So th these are the themes that have been sort of lumped together into separate pots so that we can capture what um, what the community's uh, intent is um, in this process. Um, additionally, all public comment and maps have been logged and considered in the creation of the maps that we will see today. Uh, more about this meeting. This meeting is the first of three that will help us whittle down input and maps for recommendations to be presented to the Board of Supervisors at their November 2nd meeting. We will also hear from members of the public today and commissioners will deliberate. Um, I also want to say to the public that if for some reason you don't get a chance to speak during this afternoon's process, if you're tuning in but unable to speak, um, please use the, um, the redistricting 2021 at sonomacounty.org um, email to provide your input on the draft maps that are presented today. Again, everyone's voice will be heard. All right, there's my introduction. We're gonna move on to agenda item number two, um, the final equity principles um, to be adopted. So early on in our commission meetings, it was apparent that commissioners and the communities we represent um, were insistent that for the first time ever, Sonoma County's redistricting is done not only thoughtfully and carefully, but most importantly, done with a focus on equity. Um, this 
undertaking was of such importance to the commission that we even created um, an equity subcommittee and devoted an entire meeting in September to it. Um, so to guide us through that, um, that the meeting that we had in September, we had Dr. Rosa Perez. Um, she facilitated the meeting for us. And we have Dr. Perez with us again today. Um, hello, Dr. Perez. Um, but before I introduce her, I want to again just thank her for her expertise in assisting us with this new and very necessary component of Sonoma County's redistricting. So welcome back, Dr. Perez. I am going to turn the meeting over to you um, to talk to us about equity. Thank you very much, Commissioner Sheffield. And uh, um, thank you for putting this first on the agenda at this first meeting where you are reviewing maps. Um, as a way to uh, remind everyone how important equity is to the work of this commission and to the work in this county and the, co the commitment that the board and the leadership in this county has made to equity. Um, the Equity Ad Hoc Committee wrote, uh, worked on the equity principles that were reviewed at the September meeting for the first time. And there was input given by some of the commissioners which we've incorporated into the draft you have before you today. Um, but I wanted to underscore that hopefully it is it is the hope of the equity ad hoc committee that this that these principles be adopted by you uh, by the ARC as a whole, but sent to the board of supervisors for consideration to serve as principles to be used in the in the work of other groups that are formed by the county moving forward. Other groups that are considering. Uh, similar types of important, um, you know, policy decisions that impact a residents throughout the county. We think the equity principles uh, support the values of the county, uh, the consciousness of the county, and should be used in really along with whatever uh, outcomes come from the Office of Equity from uh, Sonoma County as well. Uh, therefore, uh, the you will see that the the principles actually start with a definition of equity that's been put forth by the Office of Equity. Uh, we decided to use those words because that is um, what the, the goal of equity is uh, in Sonoma County. Um, and I honestly, what I think I'd like to do is see if there are any questions of the, there was very little, there, there were some suggestions, they were important and they were taken into consideration uh, from the last meeting, but they haven't changed the wording much. Um, for example, under values, uh, the words, uh, the values were changed to add inclusivity and or belonging uh, at the end. So there, I think there was just a lot of clarification and some additional words that expanded uh, in part some of the values, but also some of the principles to include um, to include other groups for other under other underrepresented. Oh, thank you for putting that up, Yvonne. Okay, values. From the first draft, again, back to values, inclusivity and or belonging were added. Under principles on item number three, we reworded item number three to clarify it. So it says, identify and strive to align communities of interest so that they have the greatest opportunity for equity-based representation. And then under four, uh, what was meant by equity-based representation of the groups we were discussing, we added other underrepresented communities. Some of you commissioners wanted to be sure that other communities, LGBT, uh, communities perhaps with disabilities and others were also considered. Um, so without naming any, any other additional groups, we just added the wording other underrepresented communities and also clar clarified uh, BIPOC to, to mean black, indigenous, and people of color. Um, and those were the principal additions. Again, under five other rep underrepresented communities were also added uh, to the first sentence. So besides that, it stays as recommended by the ad hoc committee and is now open for your deliberation. We're hoping Commissioner Sheffield that we can um, have a vote on these principles from the commission and that it be sent, as I said, to the Board of Supervisors for um, its consideration as well. Uh, 
Okay, well, um, first of all, I want to see if there are questions from commissioners on um, these principles. We do want to finalize, as Dr. Perez had said, we want to finalize on this today, um, and we want to be able to get it to the supervisors with consent from commissioners. Their questions, um, anything stand out on these uh, guiding principles at this time, if you could raise your hand if you have issues, commissioners. I see um, Ray, Commissioner Willits, hand up. I just um, wanted to thank the ad hoc for their work. And um, I wanted to echo um, Rose's comment about this being um, enshrined in at least uh, our work for moving on in future um, you know, commissions of this type's work moving forward, whether the supervisors want to do it in a broader sense. I think that would be fantastic as well. But that's that's all. Just a general remark. Great, thank you. Other other questions, comments from commissioners? You know, I, I want to get a pulse of the public as well. I'm looking to see who might be participating. If we have members of the public who want to um, to comment on um, on these equity principles, um, we could ask them if they want to speak up. Um, we could put the principles back up on the screen if we could, Yvonne, and maybe if there's members of the public who want to speak to them. Great. And at this point, if there are members from the public. Yes, yeah, so we have Fred who has raised his hand, so I'll go ahead and uh, promote him to panelists. Thank you. Um, I guess I was confused. I thought that this emphasis on equity was going to be mostly aimed at at creating maps that would bring equity of political power in the county. And this seems to be more really about the process here of of just working together. And so um, I'm, I'm just curious. I can't see the whole equity thing, but on, on the screen now, or I'd like to get a, a copy of that somehow. I don't think it was in the packet, but um, how, how is uh, this principle of equity going to translate into drawing the maps up so that they're, they have, have um, the maps are actually equitable and, and communities of interest, political power isn't divided in the county. That would be my question. Thanks. If I might address that. Um, if you look at the um, outcome for equity, the uh, there is an outcome to that, which is that we can not see a difference in the critical markers of health, well-being, and wealth by race and ethnicity. And that comes about through power. Uh, it is what we're trying to do is to have a real conscious. We have to have a consciousness to our process. We have to have diverse voices in the process. They have to be respected and heard. We have to learn from our history and, and hold ourselves to these standards so that equity in fact is achieved as you're describing it. Um, you, you, in order to undo what has been systemic and embedded in our practice, we have to have a process that has a different level of consciousness. But where there is, like I said, there is an outcome to which we hope we hold ourselves accountable uh, in the county and its work. So it's, it's not just, um, geez, we're gonna be kind to each other um, statement, uh, but that we hold ourselves uh, accountable for cre correcting the, the, the ills of the past, quite frankly. I don't and, know if that answers your question, Fred. Yeah, you know, and, and, and Fred, for the, for the public, um, this, this um, is a tool so the equity principles are sort of the, the lens that we've talked about. Um, this will be something that the supervisors will have as a supplemental to the maps. And, 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 and um, Commissioner Shields, I see your hand up, so I'm going to go right to you. I was just going to say, and I appreciate the comment from the public and from Fred. We did er very early on and at the bottom of the page, there's a table that shows equity throughout all stages, both the process and the outcomes to Dr. Uh, Perez's um, comments that we couldn't get to those outcomes that we were seeking without ensuring an equitable process in addition. And so the goal is actually 
to really embed it throughout so that the outcomes may reflect equity as well. And so, yes, those are important outcomes where communities of color have been protected and other communities of interest have been protected and uplifted through the process. And we do expect to see that in the outcome, at least to our recommendations made to the supervisors, but also ensuring and insisting that it's embedded, clarified, articulated as part of the process from its design. Thank you, Commissioner Shills. Uh, are there other folks in the community, public uh, comment on the, um, the equity principles? Yes, yeah, so we have a hand raised by Brian Hughes. So we'll go ahead and uh, get him unmuted. All right, Brian, you should be able to talk now. All right, thank you for the time to talk. Um, uh, I just wanted to kind of add my voice that I do appreciate this, uh, the equity approach in the rebalancing with the districts. It's, it's um, a little bit new to the, to, to the, to the meetings here, but um, I, I feel like the social economic and economic development dimensions um, will, will bring about the race and race and ethnicity um, uh, balance that we're looking for, the equity. So, so um, I'm glad to see this, and I just wanted to add my voice as one of the audience members um, of what, what, what you're presenting here. So thank you. Great. Thank you for the feedback, Mr. Hughes. Any other comments from the public? I am not seeing any other hands raised at this time. All right, I'm going to bring it back to commissioners. Um, anything to add? Um, yes, I see Commissioner Martini's hand. Um, I was uh, I was party to the ad hoc committee, and I certainly support the work and the principles. I do believe there may be a point of confusion for some readers of this document, and I, it may be a, a simple tweak. But if you look at the the opening statement, the definition equity is an outcome whereby you can't tell the difference. Everybody's read this incredible markers, but which in me, in, in my mind is, is saying that, you know, race is, is not a determinant. We are blind to race. And yet in principles number four, we say that race blindness is harmful to communities of color. That may be per, uh, interpreted by some people saying that the goal of our principles is actually harmful to communities of color. And I, I think Number four needs to more stress, you know, the issue of the systemic uh, racism. The it, it's absolutely clear we need to start with the recognition of historical harm that we have done. But I think there's some people are going to interpret that comment as a, as an internal inconsistency. Mm -hmm. You you can't ask for being blind to it and then turn around and saying that that very blindness is a problem. I, maybe nobody will see it that way. Um, yeah, I'm certainly willing. I, I support uh, the work of this. Uh, I think it's the appropriate path to go. But every time I read that, I just kind of stumble over it because I think it does create an internal inconsistency. Um, if I might respond. Sure. No, I'm, I'm open to do. Um, I think what's, what's being stated there, and I really would hate to see it go away, is this a principle, part of the difficulty we have is the number of people who say proudly, quite frankly, in some cases, and, and not understanding the harm that they're race blind. You know, they want to be race blind. The race shouldn't, as a way of saying race shouldn't matter. But then, in fact, it is. It's a, It creates real harm. It's for those of us that are affected by that kind of approach by not looking and recognizing. You know, the experiences within our races and different groups. Uh, we are. We are harmed. So that, which is why we did the panel, you know, why we've told the stories, why we want to bring to life the damage that's done. And we don't want race blindness. We want this consciousness and the consciousness will lead us to the outcome that we want, but it's part of that process. So it's kind of saying in a way that that principle is, is a principle of understanding that we just can't say something like that, that it is a harmful statement. And, and it, honestly, as I said, it, and many times it's used innocently uh, and it's not an innocent comment at all. It's a damaging concept. Could, could we do it more as a positive statement as opposed to a negative statement? 
and and see what we're, we're what we want and not what we don't want. I mean, I, I fully understand what you're saying. I'm, I'm you. I'm not the one that needs to be convinced. There are a lot of people who need to be convinced, and I think they will grasp on to anything they can to defend their their way of thinking. And I'm just trying to avoid that. But you know, if that's if I, I get what you're trying to say, I agree with what you're trying to say. I'm trying to put it in a in a spin that that is positive and, and it, it seeks what we're trying to do. I mean, the, the recognition of historical harm, I think is an extremely important statement. Um, but rather than race blindness is, you know, an openness to the, to the problems we've caused, make it positive rather than negative. I'm, I'm not gonna die on the sword over this because mm -hmm. I think everything else is fine. And I think this is fine. I just, I, I know a lot of people who are gonna pick on this and they'll see it and they'll go, yeah. And, and then they start throwing everything out and that's not right. Commissioner no. Martini, do you have any suggestions in wording? Well, I'm, not, I'm at one of the worst wordsmiths in the world. Yeah. But well, I, I think if we make it positive, instead of race blindness, it's you know, acknowledgement of the harm that's been done and being done uh, is uh, uh, harmful to communities of color. Okay. And, and okay. You know, that's kind of, the, the, it's a term race blindness that, that bothers me, that I think bothers me. Okay. Um, I'm going to move. I saw, uh, um, well, I, now I see Commissioner Horta's um, hand raised and Commissioner Rumble had a hand raised as well. Um, we'll go with you, Anna. Uh, yeah, I think it's an important distinction here. We can, we can use inequity blindness, but honestly, those inequities have been created um, based on the uh, race. So we can use the word inequity blindness, but it is ultimately comes down to pretending that races are equal when they haven't been treated equally throughout history. Okay, other comments from commissioners? Yes, I see Commissioner Lange. Lange. Your hand up, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Need some water. And strong A, very German. I think it's important water. to recognize that while the language that's written may catch <laughs> people off or have them tripping up over the words, um, it's important to just say what we mean, right? Um, I don't think that we will get very far in this process if we continue to pacify those who don't yet get why these values and these words are important. I say that because it's a lived experience that I have on a daily basis. I don't get to choose whether people see me as Black and to assume I have this rainbow unicorn experience and, and anyone else in whatever identities that they choose to stand um, firmly in. And I think it's important that we, as a commission, if this is what we've adopted because we've we had a chance to give the feedback the last meeting and all the time in between that and given the silence in the beginning that it, I assume that the silence was in agreement with the words um, to go ahead and allow this to be the imprint in which we move forward with the mapping on. That's my two cents. Thank you, Commissioner Lange. Um, other commissioners? Okay, what about the, oh, I see Commissioner Rumble. Yes. Thanks, uh, Chair Sheffield. Uh, I, <clears throat> I definitely think it is good to call. I understand, uh, Commissioner Martini, what you're saying, um, but I can think of some really uh, overt bigots who, who preface really nasty statements with, you know, I don't see race. Uh, so I think it's, I think it's a pretty good thing to call it out as, as something, um, uh, as sort of like a shield that some people use. Um, so, uh, so I think it's, I, I, I think it's good to, to keep it in there. And, and, uh, I wonder if the inconsistency, it, maybe I'm a little bit confused as well Is the inconsistency that you're seeing. Commissioner Martini, just in that principle, or is it with that principle and the opening statement? And if it was um, the definition of equity, it's I wasn't I wasn't tracking on what you were what you were saying there. Listen I, again, I'm not going to fall on the sort of the the inconsistency I see is that the outcome basically is race 
this is, I mean, it should not be a critical marker. It, you should, it, it, and in my mind, that's blind. Right. And that's so I guess. But I, I do agree with you. I mean, you know, certainly the people are going to use this the way mm-hmm. they want. And I'm, I'm fine with leaving it the way it is. Although I did like the idea of equity blindness, but that's okay. I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. And so, and so I was thinking then um, if there is that inconsistency, inconsistency on the outcome statement or per, per, potential of perception of inconsistency, could that, could that top, could the outcome be phrased a little bit differently to, to, to indicate that those outcomes aren't defined by or aren't um, aren't predicated on uh, um, I, don't, I don't know that you know that your health isn't determined that your well-being isn't determined that race isn't the determining factor in there and I will acknowledge that I was out of the country and not able to participate in the conversation originally so I don't want to I don't want to get us wrapped around my own wordsmithing axles because I think the I think that what's here is great and I'd be happy to vote for it uh, when we're ready to do that, I just try to offer a solution. And, and I, I in no way am suggesting that we change that definition. I think it's a wonderful definition. That it was just that once, and I, I, I rescind my comments. <laughs> okay, well, we're, we're going to move on to Commissioner Bohr, then back to Vice Chair Horta. There we go. Um, I just wanted to mention, you know, uh, Commissioner Martini, thanks for raising the question. I think that's always good if we, you know, challenge ourselves and, and ask questions that may otherwise be uncomfortable. Uh, personally, I, I think we need to re- retain the term race blindness. I, I think it's a, it's a startling term. It's a term that many people don't think about. And I think it really, um, in many ways, is an underpinning of the equity we're trying to achieve here. Um, And so I'm very comfortable with the language here, but I do wanna thank uh, you, uh, Mike, for bringing up the question for the the discussion. I think it was healthy for all of us. Thank you, Commissioner Bohr. Um, Back to you, Vice Chair Horta. I think uh, maybe it is helpful to add in the paragraph in the beginning that unfortunately race and ethnicity have determined inequity. And then that would be a clear link to uh, race blindness. So I, I think that might be helpful, like adding that as, as a clarification. Okay. And I see Commissioner Willett's hand. My only other thought would be to um, quote race blindness to differentiate it because we're saying when people say I'm, you know, they use that as a defense. Well, I, I don't see, I don't see races. I'm race blind, right? Uh, that, that kind of differentiates that attitude of race blindness from a process of equity where we're trying to not um, have those things be markers. I, I don't know if that would help be helpful to anybody, but that's all I can offer. Thank you. Um, Dr. Dr. Perez. You, um, the, the opening paragraph really can't be changed. It is a quote from the Sonoma County Office of Equity and how it defines its work uh, and its out- the outcome it is trying to work towards. Mm-hmm. And so therefore, and these principles sort of are, are aligned with that. So I, I understand Commissioner Orta's recommendation. I really do, but I don't feel like th- this commission can do that other than to recommend back to the Office of Equity, um, that wording. Uh, so it's a, it's a direct quote. Okay. Thank you for the clarification, Dr. Perez. Um, Vice Chair Horta. Can we add that on number four, say that race and uh, ethnicity have been determinants of inequity and then continue with race blindness? Can we okay. add that? Maybe that will be helpful. Thank you. Okay, so we are 
we have some suggestions here and we are actually looking to vote on principles tonight. Maybe there could be some amendments. Um, so in a moment, we're gonna, we're gonna ask um, possibly, we, we, wanna, we wanna make this formal. So we will seek a motion. I see um, Commissioner Martini's hand. Uh, sorry, if I could just interrupt you for just a moment. We did have another comment from the public that came through from, from Fred. Okay, we'll we'll take Commissioner Martinez, and then if we could read Fred or if, he, or if he's around, we'll go to him. I simply want to apologize to the committee. I was I was probably looking too deep in it, and I would like to make a motion that the uh, advisory the advisory redistricting committee uh, approves the uh, equity uh, principles as presented today. Okay, is there a second for this motion? I will second it. This is Cynthia Murray. Okay. You see Commissioner Murray second. Okay. We're going to circle back to Fred. Fred has a comment. Hi. Am I live? You are. Okay. Um, Welcome back, Fred. Thank you. Um, it just seemed to me, you know, just as long as I'm here, I might as well comment if I can. Thank you for letting me have two comments on this. Um, that the way that, that this statement is written, it, it, to me, it sort of clearly says that, you know, being race blind would be the idealistic or the, uh, you know, the, the ideal that we would strive for. And then lower down, there's an acknowledgement that, you know, racism is a current problem. Um, and I think there's also kind of a tendency to, to uh, try and erase racial differences by collapsing them into uh, socioeconomic categories and class. And so, you know, as, as we're working through all this equity stuff, you know, maybe a new uh, transformational view can come that kind of unifies uh, history so you can look at, at class aspects and race aspects and not have them be in tension with each other, but to, to see that they're all part of the same ball of wax, you know, not one or the other. So that's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, any other comments back to the public? Any other comments, input? We do oh. have one more comment from Eric. So I'm going to unmute him right now. Let's do it. Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, thank you. Since my um, appointment won't be official until tomorrow, I won't be voting, but I wanted to state my support for the action pending. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Kornschofer. All right, well, we have a, a motion from Commissioner Martini. We have a second from Commissioner Murray on the floor. Um, Let's do, we'll use technology. You can use the raise hand function. All in favor of the motion um, to adopt the equity principles. Okay, looking at hands raised. Try to find a way to capture these. <laughs> All right. Now, if you could lower hands. Anybody opposed? I just want to know anybody opposed or abstentions. Let's go for um, anybody. Um, let me, there we go. Opposed, raise a hand. Abstentions. Okay. Looks like the motion passed. We have our um, equity principles that we will be able to submit to the board of supervisors, give them that equity lens that they will need to help them for the remainder of the process. Thank you again, Dr. Perez. Thank you so much for the Equity Ad Hoc Committee, all the work that you did. Um, and thank you, commissioners, for your feedback on this as well. We are going to move on to agenda item number three. We're gonna review the draft maps. Um, this is the bulk of today's agenda. NDC is going to give us a presentation. We're gonna see the draft maps that represent the themes from public testimony and comments from all around the county. Um, 
the public comments have been um, and and the submitted maps they've been logged they were used in the creation of these maps um, the hope is that in the next hour and a half that we will begin narrowing down and prioritizing maps and hopefully over today and the following two meetings that we will be able to identify three to five focus maps. Um, I'm going to turn the meeting over to NDC, but um, following their presentation, I wanna go back directly to the public for in, their input before I have the commissioners weigh in. So unless there's any objections to this approach, I will turn it over to Ken Hawkins um, with NDC. Welcome, Ken. Great, thank you. Welcome. Uh, thank you for the welcome. Is everybody, can you hear me at this point? Um, just first, um, an acknowledgement having been a commissioner many years ago on a different committee. Um, this is hard, uh, tough work to slog through. Um, and so appreciate that. This is an extra lens. The equity lens is really, really critical. Um, a, a personal note, just so you know, Shalise Tilton, who would otherwise be here, had a personal emergency. So she uh, has been doing a lot of the work here and heavy lifting with me coming on board. Uh, so I'm going to um, uh, represent her as best I can. Um, I want to run through the presentation. I'll share my screen and run through the presentation that I have and get to the maps um, so we can reestablish sort of the framework that we're using um, uh, uh, to draw the maps. Let's see if this works. Tell me when you can... Tell me when you can see that. Yes, Ed, Mr. Chairman, sorry. Yes, I can see that. All right, so let's go down here and then I'm, I'll, again, I'll rip through and in the middle of it, we can talk about the, the, the maps that we have produced publicly that we want you to react to. That uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, you appropriately said sort of an amalgamation of taking a lot of the input and then driving them into certain amount of maps. And the whole idea here is to narrow it down so that we can get to a place um, where you're really considering a couple that you can then give a solid two or three to the supervisor so that they can make a decision. Um, a reminder of where we have been and what we're trying to do here. You had initial meetings in June and July. Um, frankly, the workshops are really important as you all will likely uh, acknowledge. This is not, um, natural, normal stuff. You really have to learn where the guide rails, guardrails are and the boundaries and how things operate um, because it's just sort of an arcane space. And, and you're, you, whether you know it or not, you've become uh, more of an expert in this than you think because most people have absolutely no idea how this stuff operates. Um, that's why you have some, uh, as you can see, some training sessions here. Um, you hit the equity conversation and you had an ad hoc report. And on the 15th of September, you had another workshop where you're starting to receive public input. I should stop here and say, um, like everything else in our worlds these days, COVID had a significant impact on when we and other everybody across the country got data to start doing this. So everything has become quite compressed um, as far as getting the data, then driving it into maps, etc. And so the workshops were good to give people a framework, but then we had to get the data. Um, and so you can see here, the Census Bureau was released in 2020 in a legacy format that was really, frankly, not very usable. Um, California's redistricting came out on September 20th, excuse me, um, with prison uh, data uh, counted as, as far as where their um, addresses from their last known address is home. Um, and so you can see we're compressed here um, in the next week and a half, week and a half after September 20th up to the beginning of October um, to get data into maps and start to mess around with it and shape it because we didn't have a lot of time. Uh, the Board of Supervisors met on the 5th, um, again, to re-acknowledge some of their priorities. You know what, I just realized if I can, can I get rid of this? There we go, I'll put it over there. Um, uh, and receive some public input. Um, let me go down here. We are, um, you moved the deadline for initial draft maps from the public to the 8th, from the 8th to the 15th, that was last Friday. 
our folks worked on the weekend to try and produce some focus maps based on the input and the feedback from you all and your community. And that's what we have today. And I'll give you a, a sense of what, we're, uh, what we've come up with. Uh, there's a workshop this Friday, again, to have people react. Um, uh, and then the 25th, of course, the presentation of the draft maps of our focus groups. Um, it's really, really critical to work backwards. There is no if, and, and but here. If, well, there is, if you don't come up with adopting a map, it will be pushed to a court and the court will hand you a map or they'll be offered opportunities to take a map from the public um, if you don't do it by the 15th. And so if you assume that that's not an option you want, which I would suggest you shouldn't, um, you have to work back for, backwards from there. You need to have a third and a fourth official hearing, and that will be Board of Supervisor meetings, uh, where you all as commissioners become members of the public if you want. You will have already submitted your work, and then uh, you can continue on leaning in um, to provide um, updates and input. And by the 15th, you're supposed to have your map adopted. Let me stop there and see if there are any questions or comments about that and where we are. And Ed, uh, sorry, Mr. Chairman, if you can help me navigate, I can't see everybody. Yeah, so. no, I, 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 I'm, I'm looking for hands raised. Commissioners, if you have questions. Okay, I'm not seeing yeah. hands. Hearing none, I will move forward. Thank you. Okay, this is oh, we had a we had a quick hand raise. Oh, a quick hand. All right. Under, <laughs> under, under, under the under the time limit. Yes. Who's got it? I, I do. This is Commissioner Lange. I have a quick question. Um yes. is, can there be clarity? Is it in your recommendation as the consultancy that commissioners participate, or is it an expectation of the county as commissioners for us to participate in the public comment? I think clarity around what that means for us um, as the Board of Supervisors meetings we know can go um, extended periods of time and for those with working obligations would need to have clarity around if there's an expectation from your end or the county's end or both um, and to have that defined for us. Yeah. I would if I overstated it as an expectation my apologies Commissioner that was my editorial comment. Uh, my, my, my point is your work will have your official work will have been done. You will have handed over to the county and you are free to lean in. I, what, I, what, I, what I was trying to say is you're done, but now you're a member of the public, which you would expect the public to show up at those meetings, or you would hope that they would to help their elected representatives make a good decision. Thank you for the question. Other questions from commissioners? Last chance. Uh -huh. All right, <laughs> go ahead. All right. And anytime, feel free to raise your hand. Okay, um, so this is something that we need to emphasize. And with, with you know, I, I want to acknowledge um, Commissioner Martini's comments um, about the equity lens. It, it really is uh, an important conversation that, frankly, the country is having, um, continues to have. That said, there are rules uh, under which you have to perform um, the drawing of maps, and they are in order. Um, the following. And this federal law, I want to mention, spend a little time here and mention it. Uh, the first, these are foundational, the, the federal laws. The first is equal population. It, it comes down to the phrase you all might have heard, one person, one vote. Um, the way they decide how many people get elected in the congressional districts is they take the total population and they divide it by 435. That is the size of the congressional district. So districting has to create what they call population balance within reason. You're, you're not gonna get it right on the nose, but it is a fundamental um, um, lens through which you have to draw the maps. Otherwise you don't get what's called equal representation. The second part is, is an important and subtle part to what I would say is Commissioner Martini's sort of conversation. The Federal Voting Rights Act says you cannot draw a map that dilutes the potential voting power of a protected class, which are called out as lingu linguistic or ethnic communities. They call out Hispanic, Latino, Asian groups, et cetera. You can't draw a map that either takes a, a cons consolidated group and draws a map in between them so as to dilute their potential to get a seat, 
or if you have enough in a community and that should actually produce two seats, but you carve out enough of them to pack them into one place and all they get is one seat or the potential for one seat, that's called packing. You can't do that either. In either instance, you are diluting the potential for that protected class to get a seat. Doesn't guarantee it, but it dilutes potential. On the flip side, you cannot racially gerrymander. So you can't then go looking for a Latino seat or an African-American seat or an Asian seat. It's a subtle difference, but they have to exist together. And again, I think the equity lends all that language around this, sensitizes the effort here in Sonoma County to, to we, we care about this stuff. So we cannot draw lines that dilute, but we also can't try and gerrymander, which we all understand, I believe. And if you don't, please let me know. But you can't draw maps that don't take into account the next section, the California criteria, which are in priority order, um, that, that will draw you towards a district. So, and there are lots of ways to draw those maps, but these are fundamental issues. When you get to the California criteria, you, it's, it may not be obvious, but you want districts that are contiguous. You don't want districts that hop over other districts. You secondly want, and this is the key phrase of art here, um, communities of interest. What is a community of interest? It's how you define it. Is it race? Is it socioeconomics? Is it um, a, a professional? Is it income? Is it all kinds of things that you can define and say, we wanna keep these communities together. And this is the logic of drawing this map. Third is cities uh, and counties and or municipal areas, but um, that are, uh, you try your best not to split them. Now you're gonna see with Santa Rosa as a good example, if that area, that city is bigger than a district, you can't keep them together. By definition of the equal population, you're gonna to have to split it off somewhere. And so you try your best to keep cities whole and you try, even if you have to cut them, you try not to cut them too much. It's just one of the principles in California's um, legislation. Uh, the fourth, easily identifiable but the boundaries. It, this, unfortunately, sometimes in certain areas, it's a freeway, it's a park, it's a, you know, a business park, it's, you know, a downtown area. It's all kinds of things that are identifiable as potential barriers. And the way I like to talk about this one is simply, you know, you should ask yourself, where, where do we shop? Where do we orient? Where do we go? And what's keeping us from going to that other place? you'll often find identifiable boundaries in that regard. Compactness is, is one that plays very well with, uh, in, in accord with gerrymandering, so you don't stretch a district in such a way that you go by one group to get to another. Um, and then again, the last one is you can't, we can't gerrymander for political party purposes. That's the one historically that it was, has been done and most people know about gerrymandering um, <clears throat> from that perspective. Um, the last part has to do with sort of the dynamics of what you do once you look at the maps and say, hey, wait a second. Um, this, if we draw these maps, um, if you have, you want to try and minimize where voters have been historically over the electoral process, doesn't mean you can't. And you'll see some of the maps that do that. Respecting voters' choices is this. If you voted for somebody and they're in the seat and they're supposed to be there in 2020 until 2024, but by drawing a line, they're going to be up in 2022. That's that you try and avoid that because you voted for them for four years, right? Sometimes you can't avoid that, but you try and avoid it. The future population growth, you all are experiencing this in, in an unfortunate way because of the fires. And those areas have been depopulated and we know they're going to grow. So you can underpopulate those districts. You'll see some of the maps do that because you know that that's gonna grow into it. You gotta be a little careful with that because you can't predict the future. Uh, but if on the drawing board in the county, 
the planning department has 3,000 people that are going to be built into a planned community, you kind of know that that's coming. Or as you're doing, you're, you're rebuilding from the fires. And again, the core of existing districts, that's similar to the number one voters shifting and what you'd call is communities of interest that are historically kept together. So again, let me stop there and see if there are any questions you have, and then we can start to look at how things come, came about. Commissioners, questions? All right, keep going, Ken. All right. Sorry, Sorry there is a one question in the Q&A. Oh. Um, so it says, if there is no racial gerrymandering by federal law, why are red states apparently doing exactly that? <laughs> um, because it's a, it's a very good question, but it's a testament to what, I, it's, it's a guidepost for this commission and others. If you're going to do things, the right way to do it is through communities of interest. That's the language that you need to use and identify communities of interest in such a way that it's defensible when the court looks at it. So they are not being allowed to jury racially jury. I assure you what they are trying to do to your point is to create a community of interest that represents what their, that the priorities of that state. I can leave it at that, but I think I, I get your point. Um, you're not allowed to draw a African-American district or draw a Latino district. You cannot, you, you can draw it that has that community of interest with a high potential for electing somebody from that protected class. Make Other sense, questions? I hope. Yeah. Other questions? I see a hand raised from Brian Hughes. So you should be able to unmute yourself. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Um, I do have a question on the undivided neighborhoods and um, yes. uh, in some of the challenges we have between um, incorporated and unincorporated. So yep. Sonoma County is a rather large uh, county with a rather small population. Um, and um, uh, a lot of unincorporated. So I'm actually in I'm on a Rio in the lower Russian River in the fifth district. Uh, so I, I, I question is, is that an absolute rule that you can't divide neighborhoods or cities? Because it seems to me that one of the better outcomes of trying to come up with a socioeconomic balance is to find not only a representation across racial divides, but also through incorporated and unincorporated divides. So that seems to me that you would succeed in part by dividing cities, you know, where a city would actually be half in one district and half in another so that you would have equal representation between incorporated and unincorporated citizens or constituents. Yep. You're right on top of it, Commissioner. That's, you'll notice in the federal laws, there are things you can't do. In the California criteria, these are things that are, they want you to try and do, uh, and that they want you to use as a prison. But in districts in, like yours, the county, you're 100% right. You have these enormous areas that even if you put them all in one, they don't have enough people. And yeah, so, so where do you got it, you know, it's, it's the old um, phrase, uh, um, why do you rob banks? Because that's where the money is. If, if you're trying to get population, you got to go where the population is. Yeah. And but, we, well, I, I'm, I'm just so you know, I'm sitting here in Arizona and they're trying to draw maps and they have these enormous spaces, but they've got to get into Maricopa County to get people or Tucson to get county. I mean, uh, population. You guys have a similar situation with Santa Rosa and other areas, and you'll see how that plays. So it's not a not a hard and fast, but you try your hardest not to divide neighborhoods. The other thing I would tell you is some neighborhoods, when you get down to the territory, in other words, the map is not the territory. You could look at a neighborhood on a map, you start getting down to the, the actual territory, the neighborhood is divided. There are two sides of it. There's an east this and a west that, right? So that's what we really, really need the intelligence of the community to tell us it's okay to divide here because we orient differently. I guess, um, I guess I'll so just kind of leave one last question here. So in order to achieve kind of a balance between uh, wealth inequality, uh, racial uh, lines, yep. and I would argue, you know, the um, incorporated versus unincorporated city versus rural, it seems that that balance is going to have to be blind 
in part to cities. Because, for example, if I want to create a district that's well balanced, where I have one, the same number of unincorporated voters that I have as incorporated voters, the name, same number as people in a lower income bracket than a higher income bracket then technically I would use a computer software to kind of lay it out and optimize the map. And then I would then see that, oh, these cities do actually get divided. So, so is that something that we can't do or is this something that's just not? You, you, you'll see the maps that are drawn. You, you can do it that way. I would suggest you don't do it blind because I think that that gets you, again, looking at a map rather than the territory. And I think okay. you, you can start with numbers the way you just did, but I would submit to you sometimes unincorporated just because they're unincorporated doesn't share a community of interest. Uh, and an urban area, just because it's in a city doesn't share necessarily. You can use that as one of the filters you use to start from. And I know that's a hot button issue, a meaning an important issue in Sonoma County. Uh, so you can use it, but after you use it, then I would say, well, what does that do for all these other communities? Where are the lines falling? This isn't a one layer kind of effort. You, you need to use multiple. To, to, I, I think to, to get it right. Okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, so good, good questions. This is really, and this is again happening all over the country. These issues exist because heavy population areas go out to suburbs and rural, and it creates the need to, to do things to get equal population. If you didn't have that number one equal population, we could do all kinds of things, right? But you got to have equal equal districts. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Weeks. I see. Is that you with a raised hand or? Commissioner Weeks, yes. Sorry. Miss. Thank you, Sorry. Uh, Chair Sheffield. I was just looking at um, kind of a point of clarification and how we're doing this process. And I was hoping we could hear from the consultant in total and then open it up to public comment. Um, I think it might flow a little better for those okay. of us who are newbies to this. So I just wanted to pass that on. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, I just. I just want to make sure there are no questions about how I'm presenting, but I got it. I'm happy to move forward. Does that Thank make sense, you. Mr. Chair? Yes, it does. Okay. Please continue. So uh, these are some of the spreadsheets and the numbers we're looking at with your current districts. Um, there's all kinds of stats that we pull out, but generally um, you want to look at uh, total population. And remember, this is total population of residents. But the people who actually vote is an important identifier. You need to know, I could have a huge population, but if the identifier of citizens voting age in a protected class is much lower than, it, than the total population, that's an indicator. That may not help, that, that might help dilute, dilute a district, if that makes sense. So these are the districts right now, you can see uh, for the Hispanic population, District 4 has the highest both total population and citizen voting age at 21%. Okay, let me move to the next. Voter registration. Again, District 4, you can look for the Latino estimated. It's close to 21. It's 19. Voter turnout is getting there. You can see how the numbers change, drop a little bit. Frankly, I've seen a number of these. None of this surprised me. What you're really looking for in this kind of data, to be frank, is significant drops or significant changes. That should trigger, hey, wait, what? something's going on here. I need to pay attention, right? So right now, this, is, this would be, I would say, as well within the norm of what you'd find in drop-offs from total population to voter population, et cetera. And voter turnout you can see should be a little higher in 2020 because it was a presidential election, which it is. And then you do age, immigration, language, et cetera, education. If, if and when these things, I uh, forget who just mentioned it, uh, to socioeconomic level, uh, one of your supervisors mentioned something that's important and it's really hard to delineate. If a household income is X, but you have a larger family is Y, maybe that doesn't, that changes your SES, right? Um, and so you kind of put the bottom two together, right? What percentage of income is 75 to 200,000, but then what percent of single families or multi multi-family members? Um, and so it, it, again, these are just indicators and you're looking for significant adjustments or drop-off. I have seen districts that made circles 
around socioeconomic level. And that was their primary community of interest that they were trying to develop. Okay, so let me tell you what we received and how we went, 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 went about this. A lot of maps were submitted and some of them were not full maps, which is good. We, didn't, we don't expect you all to be map pro pro um, professionals here. Uh, if you can't balance the map, that's okay. We can take what you're trying to get at, the priority you're trying to do through your map and integrate that into a map that is a little bit more balanced. So we got, or we, we got 30 different drawn from the public. We then took that and drew three that kind of pulled from the public input from the, the, the maps that were drawn, et cetera, and drew three that are somewhat different, and I'll talk to you about them, but they play off of the issues that you just, you brought up and were brought up over the past couple of weeks. Two of the ones that were brought in publicly were pretty good as far as sort of taking into account different things, and they were close to a population balance. So we were gonna look at those, we could adjust the population balance. When you get close to it, you can just start to um, carve off pieces that don't affect the nature of the map and just get you your numbers. There were three that were non-contiguous, and so we didn't know where to start with those. You, they're just sort of not connected. And three that were not population balanced or anywhere close for us to adjust or adapt, so we didn't choose those. So we have five maps for to look at really quickly here. Um, I can go down the majority of sort of the issues around each of them. That's what I'm intending to do. And then what I'm hoping to is a little bit get out of the way and have you guys discuss them to see if you can um, give me feedback or us feedback about what you want uh, in terms of adaptation or adjustment. Um, again, the, the theme- Can, can we, we stop for just a minute? It looks like sure. the our crept sure. hand raised. Sure. Yeah, I don't know if this is out of turn or not, but one thing I wanted to ask was, um, since you are able to slightly balance population um, and using your uh, the continuity and office principles you had earlier, a lot of these maps um, have the wrong districts. So traditionally where district five is, so if you're using the color coding on, um, what is that? Um, the redistrictor, the, the 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 tool, the mapping tool. Yeah, so yep. they're they're color coded, right? So uh, yep. district one is blue, two is orange. Yep. Or yep. They're yeah, I'll show it to you in a second. You'll just see it in a second. You'll see what yeah. you're talking about. But what's the question? Um, traditionally, right? So if we're using like strong points, so like Petaluma would be district two, um, and so the main part of Santa Rosa or uh, uh, Sebastopol would be District 5, Healdsburg District 4. They're using the wrong colors for those, right? So they're doing the mapping tool using the wrong district numbers color coded. So my question is, using the continuity and office, are you guys allowed to adjust those based on who's there now, or are you not allowed to adjust those and just have to keep them the number where they are? Okay, so two different questions. I, I, I would say to you, uh, uh, Commissioner, Try not to get distracted by the numbers and the colors right now. I think the real, the heart of the question is where the current supervisors are, right? You're trying to say, can you adjust to keep them in or out of a certain number of district? No, no. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is he, okay. We'll use District Four as an example where I'm from, right? So the the supervisor from there is from Healdsburg. That color is supposed to be green, but Healdsburg and the entire surrounding area, of which is traditionally District Four on this one map that I'm looking at is colored for district five. Does that make sense? Yes. Like it's not like, they, like if you look at the map, all the, the districts are generally the, where they were, maybe a little alteration, but they're all miscolored using the tools. Does that, I, I'm not sure if you're understanding how I'm describing this. Uh, I'm not, can I, can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Let, let, let me go through the draft maps. And then if you can call out while we're going through those maps, Here's okay. a good example. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Share with you, with your permission. Yes. I, 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 yes. I think I understand it, but it would be better if we're looking at an example. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and Commissioner Bohr, you have something to add? Uh, I, I just have another question. Um, 
Mr. Chalkins, you mentioned that we have uh, about 30 some maps, candidate maps. You're going to be sharing or reviewing five of them with us? Yes. How did you select those five that you're showing us and what about the balance of maps? Good question. <clears throat> you all could go and see all of the maps that were submitted um, on one of the websites that I'll show at the end. Um, again, through you know years and years and years of doing this, our map uh, drawers, the people who are real experts at this, take all of the feedback, look at all of the maps, you kind of dis take out the ones that you can't get there from here, but doesn't mean you, you take out the essence of what they're getting at. They're trying to get at something, which is keeping certain cities whole or keeping things balanced. That goes into what we consider commissioner Bohr, as far as an amalgamation of those priorities. And we draw maps to try and make that real. And again, I, I, would, I would be shocked if we got a lot more that were perfectly balanced. This mapping stuff is not easy. It's easy to kind of do, but not easy to get right. The most important part I can tell you is the minute you adjust this line, it changes this district. Then you got to adjust this line. And it is a ripple effect that is maddening when you get into it. So the answer to your question is we took the priorities. Our experts know where and how to take slivers off of this and slivers off of that, and thereby not... Um, diluting the material quality of the districts, whereas somebody who's just at this would have a harder time doing it. That said, you have two districts, two, two maps that are not bad as far as population balance, and you'll see them. So it was really just our expertise and an amalgamation of all the stuff that we heard. That's the logic. Okay. Okay, other questions from commissioners before we move on? Just conscious of time here, so I, yeah, exactly. Thank you. you. Know, I, I I don't want to look at my watch like I'm rushed. I'm not. I'm here all <laughs> night, but uh, but I want to be conscious of your time. So, um, so Commissioner Board, to your question, these are sort of the themes. Some of the themes that we heard from you all, from comments, etc. We tried to keep um, cities and, and district priorities whole. Um, so Roner Park is obviously one. Santa Rosa is a, is a tricky one to, I've, again, the commissioners, I don't remember the name, but to your point where you have to go to the population district, well, yeah, you could split Santa Rosa up four ways. You'll see there's a map in there. We don't suggest that. Uh, we try and keep that limited, but you wanna try and reduce the disruption as it were. Um, so you try and keep districts and areas together. Um, you see Roseland, Springs, Sonoma Valley, Roner Park, and I don't know, I'm sorry, my apologies. It, is it Cotati? Did I say that right? Okay, sorry about that. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, so you can see where we're trying to do and there to the, to the comment earlier, distributed unincorporated versus incorporated. And that gets to how you represent the district and who's responsible for doing that. What? Again, you can see the last one there. This is a unique situation for Sonoma County with the fires. Um, it is okay to try and look at that and make sure, know that in the next 10 years, those are gonna grow into populations that make sense that are represented. Okay, so if you wanna go look at them, Commissioner Bohr here are the districts. If you've been on the website, you can look at it, obviously. Let me get at the districts. Uh, and Yvonne, I'm sorry, everybody has this and this is getting pushed out. Um, and I'll, I can, I'm happy to share this presentation, obviously, to push out as well. Yeah, I, I put the link in the, um, in the okay. chat and it's also available for the public as well. So let me show you what I have here. I'm gonna try and get to uh, where we are. Okay. So first thing we're gonna do can everybody see that change? No. You're not, you're, you're, you're still looking at the presentation? Yes. Okay, so this is a weird thing about Zoom. What I have to do is unshare. Oh wait, I, I think a new share, yeah. I'm gonna have to keep doing this, but I will for right now. Okay, tell me when you see the spreadsheet. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, and it, it's a weird thing. I can't just keep showing you, but that's fine. 
NDC, we have a 201, a 202, and a 203. I will go through those maps um, and talk about them. And then we have, let me get down to your, there's a couple of your maps, the ones that, there's 101 and 102 and 103. Sorry, 103 and 104 are the ones that I'm gonna look at, okay? So without, that's, this is just a bunch of comments from us. I'm sorry for the dizziness there. But Commissioner Bohr, we use the numbers here as sort of the first cut, and then we use the priorities to answer your question to get at how did we do this, okay? I'm gonna do another new share here and I'm gonna to go to the actual maps. Please tell me when you see a map. You can see a map. Okay. So how do I get this out of the way? I'll just, oh, okay. Well, that, that may not help either, but okay. This, oh, shoot, sorry about that. I'm gonna show you the NDC maps first. This is map 201, okay? Let me tell you what the priorities were here. As we went through it, I have a list here. I wanna just read it. Santa Rosa went from four districts to two. That would be in district one and in district three. That's here and here. Roner Park is no longer split with Cotati. The coast is united in district, but it is district four. And I think that's the issue that you might have, oh, wait a second, I'm sorry, I gotta get out of here. My apologies. Petaluma in, and the South County is down here. Let me just drag that, right? Is in a district by itself in the South County. You lose Santa Rosa, sorry, has a piece of something, Santa Rosa, and it goes into connection to, to the north part, if that makes sense. I'm sorry, District 4, my apologies, District 4 loses Santa Rosa and becomes a complete rural slash northern district. Does that make sense? And then District 5 over here. District 5 loses Santa Rosa, right? And you still got Ronard Park and Cotetti together. And it follows, I'm seeing here, Greenstein Highway up to uh, a piece of the Russian River. So that's the five, up to Forestville here. But again, that was an attempt principally, as you can see, to take Santa Rosa from four districts to two to create a, a, a northern rural district, right? And um, you can see where Petaluma goes separate. Let me stop and ask if there are questions about that and if that was confusing. Mr. Chairman, I'll rely on you. I can go through all of them if you want, and then you can we can talk. Well, you know what, I see some hands coming up. Let's take these hands. We have Commissioner Bohr. Uh, thanks very much. This is, uh, things are beginning to gel together, uh, Mr. Chalkins, as you kind of demonstrate, you know, the, the criteria. Uh, I just wanted to ask a, a checking question that that sliver uh, from District 1 that extends over in between District 5 and District 3. Yep. Right in there. Can you, yep. can you zoom in? And uh, I'm, I just, I'm curious, is that the Roseland area or... Specifically, what's within that arm? Um, just a second. I, I may have a note on that. Yeah, I think I think it is. But that actually is a good example. Can you see it now? That's a good example of us. You, we had to get population for this to balance. And so where do you get it? Do you get it from this side or under here? This is one of those curious things. And where is the community of interest? So. Does that make sense? Does that answer the question? 
I think it does, yes. And I don't think I need to get any closer in there. That's about it, right? Right, and it does you, appear that, that, that that area is largely uh, Roseland, uh, mm -hmm. west of 101. Okay. And again, you can see where, you'll see in other maps, it doesn't get cut off like this, but that creates, again, to the comment, you can create a Northern and a rural district, but you have to go get population centers to add it all up, it's additive. Okay, Commissioner um, Willett. Yeah, um, hi, can we um, zoom into the area in district one on the south end that has a little um, leg that's called uh, Boys, Fetters Hot Springs. Yeah, you'll see boys in your big map there as you go in. So, I wanna, yeah, yep. I want to familiarize your, you with our community. This area in here that we're pointing at, this Eldridge, Fetters, this little finger of red that comes in all down in here is strongly associated with the Sonoma Valley and that, and that whole area. And it has absolutely nothing in common or less in common with anywhere else in the district than it does with the area down below in the blue. So if you're gonna make a dividing line in the, in the Sonoma Valley, I would suggest it's about right where your uh, arrow is up there and headed, you know, kind of uh, north, uh, take, yep. you know, take the line you got there in Glen Ellen and head it north, north uh, east in that direction. All of that area below there needs yep. to really stay with, yep, all, all that needs to say with Sonoma Valley, that's a school district and, and you'd be splitting kids up. I mean, my kid would have to go to a different school district if you yeah. did that. And so would a lot of kids. And I think that would well, really disrupt our area. Well, let me ask you a question though. The, the county lines don't change the school district lines. I yeah, think our school districts follow the- They school. will be following. That's the intent expressed last, okay. or, yes, last week's um, About, county committee okay. on- District redistrict or district organization. Anyway, okay. that that's my that, apologies. That, that would be a that would be a huge mistake to divide our our that would that would completely isolate an, an area of okay. special interest from from the rest of its area that it relies upon for support. Any good to know. And that yeah, that's good to know. And I, I I'm going to take that note right right away. That x that. Yep. Okay, and but take a note. But again, as you can imagine, given the population here. Again, and I'm not saying we're not going to do it. This is this is the trickiness of maps. You then have to go find the amount of people that are underneath Glen Ellen yep. and find them somewhere out here, right? And then that'll and they, push and, it all and They would, they would fine. absolutely make more sense to come from up in that area than they would yep. from yep. from anywhere else. Okay, you know? that's a good comment. I have it down. And okay, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. What else? All right. This is just just this is just 201. There's four to go here. <laughs> okay, we have uh, Commissioner Weeks had her hand raised. I think you, you lowered your, um, do, you, do you still have your hand raised, Commissioner Weeks? Trying to follow. Okay, up. Chair, Chair Sheffield, I, it was answered, so. Okay, okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, let's see, um, Commissioner Acosta. Great, thank you. Um, just a process question. So we're gonna see, it sounds like about five maps. My my hunch is that every map we look at, we're gonna see things we like yep. or things we mm -hmm. don't like based on um, public comment that we've all heard and read about. So just a process question. Um, what typically does your agency do with commissions like this? Do we go through each map, have you describe your, um, your attempts to meet the community input um, and then we can sort of take our notes or go back and look at each of these one at a time um, because I know we're going to try to pick three to five to send to the board then it's just a matter of which three to five and how yep. what we represent to the board as opposed to trying to make every map perfect right correct so so, so it's just for just a process question at this point is it how is the best way for us to move through this um, yep with each map, should we just hear you out on each one and just ask technical questions and then come back to deliberate the minutia of each map and which we want to throw out and which we want to keep that best represent sort of the theme? So just, just help me with this. Yeah, I would suggest if the, it's a good question, I would suggest in the winnowing process, if there are significant issues, which I think the, the previous issue, that's a big one that sounds like a big one, 
when we look at these, I would like to hear that. And in our refining process, if we can take it and come back to you on Friday and have you know, a much better, more refined, whittled you know, set of maps, that would be cool. That would be the right thing to do, right? What I don't want, what, what would not be productive is if we started getting down to, like you say, in the minutia or a line here or a line there. So I, we don't wanna to spend too much time, but are there any red flags here? Is there anything here that is significant that you think is problematic? And then we can start to get at it and then move to the next one. I'm also gonna say, I don't know that I have the public 103 or 104. Oh no, I do in, in terms of maps, okay. So that's, I hope that answers your question. There's, there's a lot of you, that's the problem. And it's a great thing because there's a lot of feedback. Right. But, but we have to work our way through it. Now you're seeing the, the struggles we have with trying yeah, to- Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> it really is it's, it's and we, we, we do have, you know, Friday and then also Monday. So we want to yeah. make sure that we, you know, that very good question. Um, I, I see other commissioners. Commissioner Willett has his hand raised. Sorry, I, 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 I meant to lower it, but I, I do have more thoughts on the same comment and we'll see this on other maps too. I'm on the Springs Municipal Advisory Council and our area, our geographic area covers that divide that we're looking at right now. So we've got Fetters Hot Springs, Agua Caliente, Boys Hot Springs and El Verano are all in our geography of our MAC. So I think that MAC is, a, is an area that needs to be the, to go to one district or another, and that's it. All right, thank you, Commissioner Krepke. Yeah, um, can you zoom in on District Three? I can. Is that close enough, or you want more? Uh, a little bit more. So, is that completely incorporated within the City of Santa Rosa? Yes, for this map, yes, and it's gone two districts rather, no, Santa Rosa has two, but yeah, this is a part of Santa Rosa. The other part is here at five. Okay, so my two comments on this is one, um, going back to the uh, continuity in office, you just like the entire Western half of the county just lost who they actually voted for in that map because you're making that district four. Um, and then also on this, there's a conversation at the supervisors meeting about um, uh, representation and how um, specifically two supervisors uh, were very adamant about spreading the representation of unincorporated uh, residents versus um, uh, uh, incorporated residents. And I feel like this kind of reversed that. It made, um, when you have more rural districts like District 4, or excuse me, uh, yeah, District 4, um, right. that kind of burdens district four and district, I guess that's five, uh, in the orange there a lot yep. more than the other ones, um, that, or that they may have been before. Burdens meaning that the, the, their, their representation and services to provide their constituents are less supported by municipal governments, right? So there are a lot more to do, right? I get it. You're right. That, that, this map doesn't do that. It, it, it heeds more towards keeping. The first issue is, I, 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 it's not on here, but I'd have to see where the elected is. But the second, we can take into, that into account. The, you, the second one is just where it is. It, it, that was intended to keep it within Santa right. Rosa. Is it possible to overlay the existing um, districts? Uh, yeah, yes, I can show you that. It's hard to see though. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. If we could do lines instead of shading for the current districts, I mean, that way changes would pop out visually. And it's kind of ridiculous to not have. How about marking. this? There you go. So you can see, right? Three is here and we took this piece and in and around here, right? It's, it's hard to see it, I'm sure, right now. And again, we want to be careful that to, I, I get the point, and I want to be careful that to try and draw the maps here. Um, but I get your point. I get both of those points, right? Um, okay. Um, Commissioner Shields? Yeah, I appreciate the lines 
on all of them for visual cues to be able to see the differences and track the differences. I'd like to ask for that for all of them. I wanna reiterate the Fetters Hot Springs of that whole area is a community of interest and to bifurcate it seems to be, okay. I just wanna kind of co-sign on um, Ray's comments. <laughs> and then okay. um, I, I wanna just say out loud and see how other, in my mind, we're submitting multiple maps forward to the supervisors for them to make the decision. I see like us submitting three to five, I don't know, but not one. And the issue that came up for the supervisors about whether it's more or less work to have unincorporated or not, I don't, I don't know that I buy the singular argument and I don't know that I need to, to present maps that seem to kind of give options for their final decision-making is, Am I, is that right? Are we're giving them more than one map, I'm assuming. Yes. That's correct, yes. Yes. Unless you nail it perfectly. Unless we no. nail it perfectly. No, I don't want to. It's not my job, it's theirs. Well, I just, and a right. narrative. We can yes. provide a narrative for the maps that we choose. Um, that's yep. also our, our role, the advisory part of our role. That This is what we choose and this is the reason why. The community is doing the same thing. Mr. Chairman, that, that's really important. The logic around the map gives them, frankly, a sense that you were listening to them and the community, and you are representing that at the commission. So if you gave them three different maps, but they all took into account the things that you're hearing a lot of, and again, you may not, Commissioner, think that incorporated or unincorporated is important, but if you heard it a lot, um, you, you might want to give them a map that does that, right? Just so, so it doesn't show that you as a clinician are not listening to them. So it's, it's a little bit of a balance. I would say if you gave them more than three maps, that would be too much. Because mm. again, they have to look at it and vote as well. They, they, they won't have, you should be able to get the priorities down to about three. All right, Commissioner Lange. I just want to caution us on zeroing in on this conversation about unincorporated versus incorporated, because that has, I've only heard that dialogue from the supervisors themselves. Mm -hmm. And that in itself is a matter of workload management that we're not going to be able to solve by drawing the lines. Now, if they want to, amongst themselves, decide to expand their staff to meet the needs of whatever the outcome presents itself, then I think that that's an important thing that they will have to own. But I don't know that that's something that we need to prioritize and shoulder as we try to understand, again, the needs of the community and the representation that follows suit with that. And I think as we talk about communities of interest and the needs that people um, are expressing and have thoughtfully provided uh, an abundance of feedback on, that really should be uh, the priority of what we guide our, um, our feedback in and consideration for what they've asked for. But yep. I know, you know, if I were to run for an office or leadership in high school, right, if we want to take it back to school, I can't pick which members of my class I want to represent. I have to go with the class that, you know, is before me. So I think we need to think about it in a little bit more of a broad sense around who lives here, what the needs are, what the pockets of representation are, where some of the imbalances may come about, and how we define lines that um, re represent uh, those needs. And then, of course, we know that this process in the next five cycles of elections over the next 10 years will provide opportunities for leaders to rise to serve those needs. I think that's the whole, from my perspective. Thank you, Commissioner, Commissioner Lange. Um, Commissioner Rodriguez. Um, I agree with what uh, Commissioner Lange just said, uh, we could take what the supervisors say into consideration, but it should not be the highest priority um, consideration um, because there will be other supervisors after them. And this should be uh, dependent on the constituents and what they want for their communities. Um, and that being said, the Sebastopol area, from what I've heard and from what I've read, they want to be a part of District 3. Um, so this would completely just sideline um, by putting them into, into, into District 1. Um, and they have a strong, and I would like to hear from other commissioners here who live in, work in, I have a relationship with Roseland, the Roseland community, but that is what I understand is that they, um, 
also have a strong ties to Santa Rosa, the city of Santa Rosa and that commission and that district. Sebastopol, um, Sebastopol does, is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Um, Sebastopol and I just, or Sebastopol Road? Roseland, um, but on Sebastopol Road. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Sorry, not, not Sebastopol. Not the Sebastopol city. the city, no. Okay, so you're talking about Roseland in here? Yes. They want to be more in three. So that's yeah. that's one of the issues that again you're <clears throat> okay. Let me just With note it. Mm -hmm. We're going to get a little bit competing here, mm -hmm. but that's okay. I'll note it. <clears throat> um, and then I will also say Pengrove and Petaluma have a strong relationship with each other as well, and similar um, concerns, history. Um, so that's another thing that just popped out to me. Say that one more time. I'm sorry. Sorry, Pengrove. It's yep. um, yeah. I got it. Pen Pengrove and Petaluma have a relationship with each other and a shared history. Um, so I would, that's just another difference that I saw here that I, that I think is a big um, change. Okay. Okay, you know, I, I see other commissioner hands up and I do also want to be mindful that we have members of the public who are on and I did at the start of the meeting, um, it was my intent to, to have them speak um, before commissioners, um, but it just doesn't seem like that's it's going to be possible with this process. I want to go to the the members of the public with hands raised. We have Fred um, Alabak, uh, his hands raised, been raised for a while, so um, we want to bring Fred in. This is just for Map Two Hundred One. Just for Map Two Hundred One. Thank you, Chair Sheffield. Um... I have a sh hopefully a short comment that um, I agree 100% with Ray Willette about the springs. And with the District R tool, I looked very closely at that whole area and there is a definite pattern of a community of interest there in the springs that I would say goes up to uh, Madrone Road. And so that when you're slicing and, and slivering off, I would look at the pattern of the community of interest there that emerges out of the indicators of District R that shows a unified community of interest that okay. goes up into Madrone Road too. So it's just south, you know, um, so that kind of gets into the middle of Eldridge in between Glen Ellen and um, the Springs area of where you would actually draw the blue line through there to include the Madrone Road community in with the people who share the same indicators all the okay. way down through the Springs. Got it. Okay, we have one other voice from the community. Oh, we have Commissioner Elect. Uh, Mr. Koenig chauffeur, hand raised. Uh, yes, I, I just wonder as a procedural matter, at least could we have, could we just have a, like a quick view of each of the five maps without a lot of commentary? Because I think that some of the issues that come up in this first map for me may be completely remedied in some of the other maps. And, you know, it might be that the group looks at the five and it, one or two of them might just self uh, eliminate. Um, it just seems like that would be a prospect of having a more efficient review process if we had an idea of the overall context, what we're gonna be looking at. And just my note on this first map, if the assignment was to design a map that was most disruptive to unincorporated community integrity, this map would be the one. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Koenig So for a very good point about process, you know, I'm seeing some hands go down now. Um, this is our first map. We haven't looked at the others. Um, Ken, you're the only one who's done this process before. <laughs> what are your thoughts no, on- that's a, that's a good thought. That, that, that's a good thought. Again, we're looking at time. I'm sensitive to your time. Yeah. I'm just wanting to be responsive, but I could go through very quickly, and you're going to see some different kinds of maps okay. coming up. So hold your thoughts, commissioners. I think we're going to take a look at some of these maps. Okay. All we'll right. Back to you, Judy. <laughs> okay. So let's go to 202. Quite a bit different, right? Um, and here's here are the main indicators in 202. This one is a little bit problematic for us because Santa Rosa, I think, is 
cut up into four, my notes here say four different ways. And that's just a problem as it relates to the Fair Maps Act, which is the, the idea, all those criteria that I suggested. That said, our mappers said the way they split up the forest had a, an internal logic that seemed to make sense. There's an Eastern district, there is a Northern in the D4 in the fire district, there is Roseland is with Southwest Santa Rosa in D5. In other words, the, 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 uh, the logic of how they split it up was significant, but splitting it up into four is, is, is kind of a red flag. And so I, we don't know what to do with that, but we wanted to put a map in there that showed you what it looked like. It keeps two, let me back up here, two South Bay districts um, and all the fire areas are in D4, according to our maps. D1 has Roner Park and the Southern, uh, my notes here are not good, something, something Southern Home District. No, I'm sorry, Southern Highway District. Got it. D2, which is here, is Petaluma, Katati, uh, to the outskirts of Santa Rosa and Sebastopol. Uh, D3, there is a central Santa Rosa district, right? D4 um, uh, is the fire district. And D5 is southwest Santa Rosa and all the way out here, right? Uh, in, with Roseland and the coast, et cetera. Does that make sense to folks? Any glaring errors in my description and or do you wanna see anything close up before I go through 203? Let's move on to 203. Okay. Let me just go here. Here's one, here's two. And now here's three. So this is the district here um, that you have. Santa Rosa again only has two districts, so it's back to a split between three and one. Um, this map, we know this is an issue in the county, but this map has two districts representing the coast. Um, district one has a piece of Santa Rosa. Um, and goes along the Sonoma Highway, all the communities along the Sonoma Highway. District two has Petaluma down here. Um, um, District three, Southwestern Santa Rosa, again, that's the second part. District four, again, I think picks up Sebastopol, yes, down here anchors it. With Windsor and everything Northwest, it becomes a big rural, but it has Sebastopol down here. Um, but again, it doesn't include, um, I have my notes here, so it doesn't include Farmville. And District 5, starting on the south here, um, south of the Russian River, right? Oh, sorry, that's up here. Um, Farmville. Bodega Bay, Roner Park, and Katani. That sort of swings in and around this way, if that makes sense. The Russian River, kind of like a hook here. The most, again, for me, looking at these, the most significant part of this is the two districts on the coast, having heard what I've heard. Mm -hmm. um, also in this, it's important to note that um, in District 3, you have a Latino, um, voting age population of 25%. That's the highest we were able to get it given the concentration of Latinos in the various districts. Um, uh, and they, we underpopulated in this district, the fire district, knowing that it would grow into its current form, its uh, future form, sorry. Can, can, can you zoom in just a little bit? I'm looking at district five and just trying to look around the margins of Sebastopol, okay. Is that close enough? Yeah, thank you. That that worked for me. Um, Commissioner Willett, you have your hand raised. Yeah, I have the the same comments as I did on the on two hundred one regarding the the springs. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we're, um, Commissioner Willett, we're gonna hold off on on those types of comments. Yep. Or uh, we'll, we'll save those for discussion. Yep. Okay. But it's a, it, it's it's good, and I noticed that as well. Um, 
here. So, okay, Commissioner Rumble. Uh, just a note on on language. Are we calling something the fire district because that's the best word we've got for it, or uh, can we not label parts of our community the the fire this and the fire that? But yeah, I, yeah, I agree. It, it, okay, it, sorry about that. We don't want to politicize anything. Thank you. Appreciate it. More trauma than it is politicized. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I'm sorry. It's really, uh, for us, it's more about the underpopulation and the growth there, but yeah. I'll make a note of that. We'll I, I get it. Maybe we, maybe we can just call it like the, you know, the district that will likely have future growth. Or a growth area, a potential growth area. Yeah. That would be fine. Okay. Sorry if that offended anybody. Commissioner Bourne. Uh, I'd just like to see if we can zoom in on that lower boundary for district three. Uh, to determine where Roseland falls within that. Oh, sorry, that didn't help. <laughs> is the um, tool is quite quite sensitive. Is that enough, or you need more? I think we need a uh, that. I think this may be fine. Well, this will certainly be fine here. Okay. Yes. That. It appears that Roseland is within the um, the balance of the Santa Rosa district here, District Three. Yeah, going down to Bellevue Avenue. Right. Thank you. Sure. Judy, Commissioner James. Thank you, Chairman Sheffield. Um, back down to District Two, Petaluma. Just to piggyback on what Commissioner Rodriguez says, that that the Pengrove area, um, West One Hundred and One. Katati up through 116 um, greatly identifies with Petaluma. Um, again, that's west of 101 uh, down to 116 where it says Robler Road. The address there is Petaluma. So if that whole area could stay, you know, related more to District 2 Petaluma, uh, just wanted to make sure you were aware of that, that that greatly identifies with Petaluma. So are we talking about right where? A little okay. lower, like 116, right below where it says, yeah. yeah. So that and south, that's all uh, the address is Petaluma. Okay, got it. Thanks. Okay, keep going, Ken. <laughs> That's what I got, but let me uh, we'll go to map public 10. Let's go 103 rather. Sorry. Take these out. So these are maps again that were submitted by your folks or by people, citizens who went in and drew. And again, I want you to give these a little bit less, uh, a, a little bit more uh, leeway only because they're not professional map makers. Um, this, this person commented about, you know, people don't live in the rural districts we got you know there's a little bit more of an urban suburban attempt here um to say let's draw the maps where the people live does that make sense um and so the uh, there are one to two rural districts and the rest are all concentrated right in in here where the quote the larger population that's all i really know about this district um, except to say I, again i would notice in this district, it keeps coastal separate, right? And uh, Santa Rosa looks like um, it's mostly held together and keeps Roseland involved, I think. Is that right? Or is Roseland here? Somebody help me with that. I, I don't. It, yeah, does, not, that, it does not keep uh, Roseland. Yeah, Roseland yeah, is it does not, not keep Roseland whole. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, that's. And South Santa. Yeah, that cuts up Santa Rosa. Yeah, that cuts it right in here, right? So that would be an issue. And again, this is what happens with, you know, citizens do it and they drop it in. That's something we would absolutely have to clean up as it were. Um, but again, these are maps that we think that we could do some significant work on to make them right. And then uh, let's go from 103 to 104. Um, this has a, again, a West County two supervisors, right? There's, there's this as well as here. Um, 
And there was a request here somehow with even distribution of race. Um, and so I, I think they had race particularly in mind here. Um, I, we don't, we had, I didn't look at the number, we didn't look at the numbers that closely here to see how close they got, but you can see district three is quite a bit different, right? Um, it does get at, I think the hot springs issue down in here, um, but still you can see Roseland is cut up and Santa Rosa is cut up. I don't know if you have any questions or comments about this one, um, but these are differentiated and they're not population balanced. We would have to go get some folks in different places here. And can you zoom in on the coastal split between five and, uh, yeah, there we go. And, and just a little bit to the west, there we go. It looks like starts at Highway 116, but then goes up and around. Okay. All right, thank you. An attempt to keep, obviously, Jenner you right. know, together, et cetera. So that's, um, that's what we have. Uh, um, th thank you for indulging me in this conversation. Uh, it's more than helpful for us to hear the pinching and tucking of all the things. Here's something that I, I want to say. Um, if three or four or five of you say something here that all follows in, volume matters. What is hard to do is to make sure a dissenting voice comes in and says, actually, that's not what I think, so that we don't misperceive that as this is a commission view. Again, with 19, that's tough. So whoever was the person that made reference to the unincorporated or incorporated, and then the person who countered it, uh, that's important to hear. It doesn't matter which way we go. It just, it means we have to really be paying attention to that and try and give you maybe multiple options so that you can really pull and tug at it so you can give the supervisors um, a good choice. Um, it's, now's not the time to be, you know, shy about it. Um, with all due respect, you want to be letting people know uh, what we think about here. Thank you again, Ken. I think we have some a member from the public who would like to speak, and we'll get to you, commissioners. We could bring over the the, the public who would like to speak. Yes, so we have um, Brian. I know you also left um, a comment, but I'm going to go ahead and unmute you so you can go ahead and, and chat. Okay, thank you. So uh, one of the comments on kind of the communities of interest, since that seems to be a, an important factor here, on I think all of the maps except for one, Forestville is not in the same district as Guerneville, uh, Monterio. So typically the lower Russian River is mm -hmm. considered Forestville through Rio Nido to Guerneville to Monterio. Um, so I would argue that, or suggest that if we're looking or you're looking to, to shape the communities of interest that kind of share a lot, that you would make sure that Forestville stays with Guerneville. Um, so that's one comment. Um, the, the second comment is, is just, um, I, I, I'm concerned, though, that there really is an un, unincorporated versus incorporated, and the challenges live or exist in the the with the priorities for the constituents that live along the 101 corridor are absolutely different than the priorities of the constituents that live either along the Russian River or the coastline. And so, when you have a single supervisor representing the coastline but you have three or four supervisors representing the 101 corridor, you're going to have a dis, like disproportionate voting when it comes to fund allocation, fund distribution. So the people who live in this massive district of all of the unincorporated areas, they're not gonna get any services. They're not gonna get any votes. They're, they're, their supervisor is gonna get outvoted. And you, what you're going to get is a comp competing uh, situation instead of a, uh, a cooperative situation. And so everyone, you know, the majority of the cities, the majority of the population lives along the 101 corridor. And so that's where the funds are going to go. That's where the services are going to go. Um, and so I, I feel that like this notion of like, oh, let's group the unincorporated all together. I personally would argue that that's a mistake. So, so I'd like to thank everyone for allowing me to make that comment. Thank you. Other comments from the public?
So it looks like we have Fred has his hand raised. So I'll go ahead and unmute Fred. Thank you. Thank you so much for being accommodating to us poor members of the public out here. <laughs> um, I would like to second that comment on the unincorporated and incorporated uh, difference here. Um, as someone who lives in Sonoma Valley that has a population of maybe 40,000 um, and then the, the Santa Rosa part of the district now routinely outvotes and uh, we just don't feel like we kind of quite get represented there. And so there is a lot of unincorporated land there in particular, uh -huh. the Springs area is unincorporated, right ad directly adjacent to the city of Sonoma, just like Roseland was directly adjacent to um, Santa Rosa. But that's a representational issue that can only really be solved by annexation rather than districting. But um, the, the unincorporated little bubbles here of people that are kind of floating around the 101 corridor we don't have the representation that uh that the cities have and so that that really is is a blow to our democracy here and that we don't have a process and then we have to go to santa rosa we have one decision maker everything's more distant um you know it's it's um it would almost in some ways be better to have uh, at large election for the supervisors so that then the all county members could deal with them as if they were the city council of 500,000 people rather than to get your own king or queen of your own district. But um, rambling a little bit, but I would, would like to say that the uh, incorporated unincorporated issue is, is one that really does affect people who live in unincorporated areas. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, let's see, we have um, Mr. Koningshofer's hand raised. All right, Eric, you should be able to speak now. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm frankly shocked that not a single map is anywhere near the map that's currently in existence, which we've been told time and time again is within the um, range of compliance regarding population. So to fail to present the board with a modification of the existing map or something close to it, um, I, I don't understand the thinking there. Um, and I, you know, when I look at the state criteria, the first item listed is geographical um, contiguousness or contiguity, whichever one prefers. When I look at just starting with the map and the treatment of the Sonoma Valley, it seems to indicate some sort of profound misunderstanding of the geography of the county insofar as that, that the, the Sonoma Valley has been recognized as a community of interest going back to statehood. And the idea that those communities which have so long been uh, unified, they're unified, they're within the same valley. Um, and, uh, you know, just on and on about uh, uh, the idea of splitting um, the communities of the Sonoma Valley kind of halfway um, down the valley to me is just a non-starter and, and really is kind of shocking. Uh, as is the idea of, of splitting the fifth district up and putting the city of Sebastopol in a district that includes Cloverdale um, it just seems really lack uh, the, the idea of community of interest um, in so many ways is, is not represented by these maps. I, I was also surprised to see so much reference to splitting the coast when there's been just such a profound negative response in the public content uh, con comments to the idea of splitting the coast. You know, when one looks just at the length of time that it's been in the fifth district. And the reason it was put in there was recognizing um, the very substantial community of interest that was created or acknowledged when the Prop 20 in 1972 was passed by statewide initiative creating the coastal zone and the coastal commission, and then reinforced uh, uh, in 1976 with the California Coastal Act. Right. Having, um, uh, failed to recognize those obvious communities of interest. And, and I, I don't want to go any further than to say one more thing. 
On this issue of the question of the unincorporated residents of the county uh, as compared to or considered with people that live in the cities. Writ large, people who live in the unincorporated areas, those people are all in a community of interest because their primary local government is not a city government. Their primary local government is the Board of Supervisors. When we talk about, for example, the city of Santa Rosa, the people in the city of Santa Rosa's primary um, representatives in local government are city council members, which are elected by districts, which is recently in, uh, um, created. And great care was taken to see that the equity issues were included as part of the consideration in the establishment of the districts within the city of Santa Rosa. And I don't focus only on Santa Rosa, but you know the fact that people like myself and a couple hundred thousand people who live in the unincorporated area or in the uh, communities like Guerneville, Forestville, et cetera, Bodega Bay, Geyserville. Um, you know, we look to the county government as the primary government in, in what is often the most important relationship between constituencies and their local government, land use and development and questions such as that, questions that are at the heart of, of community character and community definition. There is just way too short shrift in these maps for the acknowledgement that um, carving up the unincorporated areas to avoid having the largest city, Santa Rosa, which is nearly 40% of the county population, and it's unavoidably needs to be divided. Um, but that does not impact the people that live in the city of Santa Rosa so far as a relationship with their primary local government to city government. So I think you really need to go back to the drawing board um, with a lot more consideration for the circumstances of the uh, people that live in the unincorporated community. And I would say too, if you look at the um, uh, ethnic figures that you've presented regarding the various districts and um, communities where there's significant for example, Latin American, Latin, Latina population, um, many of those are unincorporated communities. And, um, you know, keeping them intact and keeping them in their um, geographically contiguous um, relationships and historical relationships, I think would be a much better approach. I, I frankly, these five maps I find shockingly inadequate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Koenig Schofer. Um, we will be welcoming you formally to the commission at our next um, hearing on Friday. Um, but thank you for your input. Um, are there other hands from the public? Yes, um, Blake Hooper, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you here. Hello, uh, thank you commissioners for your time. I just wanted to second the comments made by Mr. Konenschofer. I wanted to point out that unincorporated communities and cities have a bit of a symbiotic relationship when it comes to kind of economic prosperity in this county, especially in areas like Petaluma, where <clears throat> much of what happens out in the unincorporated areas really impacts the kind of businesses we have, where kids go to school, kind of a lot of like what represents our identity. So I would just ask that we not we not cut up so much so that it's one or two supervisors only representing unincorporated communities. I'd also like to second the points made about the coastal, our coastal community really being a community of interest. I, I really am concerned about splitting up the coast really leading to a diminishing return in the kind of advocacy that coastal communities will receive. I also have a lot of concerns on an environmental front. And I would also like to say the city of Santa Rosa has been largely split up by the board in the past and two comments already made not splitting them up for the sake of trying to keep Santa Rosa whole at the cost of all of these other communities of interest that desperately need better representation from their board of supervisors would honestly be a grave mistake for us going forward so thank you for your time thank you Mr. Hooper um, let's see, we had, do have a comment from Claudia Norby. Um, she, she left her, her comment. Um, 
Her primary concern is to have Santa Rosa include West Santa Rosa and Roseland in order to give voice to renters, middle and low income and Latinx communities in order to increase diversity on the board. Another consideration for us to take in um, are, are renters and homeowners. Okay, other questions? That's often used, by the way, as a community of interest. As, as a community of interest. <clears throat> Homeownership and or renters. Um, other questions from the public? We're going to get back to commissioners. We're going to have a good, long conversation. Um, I am seeing no other hands raised at this time. Okay, it's a little bit after six, commissioners. Um, we know we have homework to do tonight as well. We have some maps to hone in on. Maybe we have more. We have 30 plus maps to look at, um, but we are going to go to Commissioner Acosta. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, this is a lot to absorb. Um, so my intention is to take these maps and look, look at them side by side and do what I did with the maps that people had drawn in the gallery that we could look at and go back and compare that to the public comment. Um, I wanna echo the comment around um, liking to see a map that has very little change. I think I had said before, I, I think it's our job to present the, the board um, a range of maps um, that reflect the public comment, but give them the opportunity to give us some direction back on what their priorities are. Um, and try to do our best. We're not gonna get everything in one map, but I would like to see one on the very conservative end so that just we have the contrast to say, here's, here's what it takes to do very little and, and still meet the needs, um, meet the law. Um, I wanted to just comment quickly on, and I, maybe, I, maybe I, I misread it and looking at the map, but on um, just for feedback for the uh, mappers, the demographers on the public 103 map, I just wanted to point something out that I think some, something we have to think about when we're looking at, um, I think our, whole, our, our goal is to try to keep Roseland whole. One of my concerns was um, that Roseland might be moving from district, an odd district to an even district. Um, even district years do not go with the presidential. That could have the impact of lowering voter turnout. Um, so I, I just think that's something we wanna be mindful of when we move um, some of these um, communities of interest, especially if they have a, a higher um, population of language or ethnic minorities. Um, the other thing is, um, yes, we heard very strongly that the coast wants to stay one district. We heard Sonoma Valley wants to stay one district. That was very strong feedback in the, in the um, public comment. So um, I, I certainly would like to see at least one to two maps that reflect that. Um, reflect, reflect. That the, coast, that the coast is one district and that right. Sonoma Valley, um, that that stays whole, that it's not cut. Um, right. Going back to some of the comments of a, of a prior yeah. um, public. Um, and again, I, this, is, I mean, this is great. I mean, I think we need to just have something to react to, um, but, it, but it's, you know, we're not gonna obviously get there tonight and find the perfect map um, or even the five perfect maps, but um, that reflect all this. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I see now that all of those, the demographics, all that's available online. So I, I, I think I just need to spend a little time just digesting it. And, and then I think my comments maybe Friday will be more thoughtful in terms of, of these, you know, how we can make them better reflect the, the public okay. comment. Um, and communities of interest that we've heard so far. But um, for the rest of the night, I just wanna listen to hear other people's comments so that I can sort of absorb that and factor that into my, my comments in, the, in subsequent meetings. Thank just you. A, Mr. Chairman, a, a quick reaction. Again, that, all this stuff is wonderful. You have to then at the end, get down to equal population. That often is the, the tricky part here. So it, it, we're gonna do exactly what you're, we're hearing a lot of feedback. Then you gotta balance it out because otherwise that, that's, that's a no starter. You gotta have the same population. We move one line, we have to tweak the other. Yeah, it happens. It's called rippling and it's, it's really, go. really vexing. All right, Commissioner Bohr, your hand raised. Uh, thank you very much. Um, can you go back to uh, 103, Ken? Sure. Uh, so, I mean, the one thing when I first saw this, it really struck me that this District five kind of travels down and loops around Petalumans in Sonoma and then travels back up, creating a, a U or, or horse shape. Right. Horseshoe shape. 
what's what's your thought about that from a demographer point of view that that seems to make representation a lot more difficult and less efficient for people that may live there relying on a single uh, supervisor. Yeah. This would speak to somebody who is truly emphasizing urban versus non-urban. So if you did that, think about any city in the United States, you, you get sort of potential for concentric rings. If you take district four and connect it to five, you've got one big ring around the population centers, right? So you're right, particularly visually, this is problematic. So if you represented everybody over here in Timber Cove, as well as people in Kenwood, not only is that physically, you know, just incredible, it's, it would be hard to make a community of interest argument unless, unless you said most rural people have the same interests, right? So your comment is spot on. Uh, we wanted to show you what some people think. This is clearly a play towards urban versus rural. That's all. Okay, thank you. And um, that, that leads me to my, my other thought about the incorporated, unincorporated question. Um, you know, I, I, think, I think we have some really great input and as a commission, we've worked hard um, to tap into our various uh, communities that live near us or far away from us. And I think there's clearly an association between people that may live in an unincorporated area near an urban center versus all unincorporated people sharing the same interests versus in people living in uh, incorporated areas. You know, I, I would I would propose, and one of the other thing I'll mention is two things. Um, even within the board themselves, there was not a clear consensus about the incorporated unincorporated question. There was, you know, a fair amount of uh, differing points of view between the, the supervisors on that point. And, and secondly, even with the you know, terrific wealth of public comment we've collected, there was only one individual that mentioned anything about incorporated unincorporated balance. I would, I would encourage us as a commission to think about those local associations um, you know, where, for example, Bloomfield, you know, may have a greater affinity for um, a, a, a local urban area nearby versus being uh, better served to align, be aligned with uh, a vast array of other unincorporated uh, residents. Um, at the end of the day, I'm thinking about representation and will moving a line here or there increase or decrease representation you know, for the people that would be affected. Um, and I'm thinking this local association between unincorporated and, or rural and urban you know, may be a, um, you know, a, a way to help address those representation questions. All right, let's see. Um, next hand, Commissioner Martini. I just want to uh, echo uh, Eric Konnitzhofer's uh, comments. I uh, completely agree. The five maps that are presented this evening are all significant disruptions. Uh, the public 104, if you take a look at it, uh, the current supervisor of five and four would now be living in the same district. Um, and and I, I'm really concerned that one of the options that was not presented this evening uh, was, you know, something along to, you know, what's going on right now. I personally submitted a map uh, that did, I believe, just that. The comment was made about moving people from an odd to an even a district and the disruption that that causes. But if you look at the original numbers that we were working with, we were, you're able to include Roseland into district three by moving um, a little bit of three to the west, which uh, resolved the problem of district five with an overpopulation and move one in. And, and, and to move forward on this thing, to not have the something without some sort of a narrative that justifies the amount of disruption that I believe are involved in those five uh, maps that were presented in tonight, we're doing a significant disservice uh, to the population. All of the groups that I talked to, uh, with the, the, the two strongest ones was the uh, Mark West, uh, Larkfield Wiki up. They were adamant that they wanted to stay whole as a community of interest. And Roseland wanted to be uh, you know, part of the city of Santa Rosa. That can be accomplished. All of the other stuff 
Um, I, I just don't see the, the need for it. And to go to the supervisors without a map that suggests, if you look at the numbers right now, we really don't have to change anything. We're within the 10%, and yet we're doing this. Or you got, you got to either justify it to me in terms of some sort of an equity issue, which I didn't hear in the narrative, but you guys, we're, these are just disruptions for the sake of disrupting. And that's, I think, stupid. All right, good points. Let's see, Commissioner uh, Murray. Thank you. Um, I also am concerned that I thought we would start with what we have already and do an analysis of it and see if there were anything that needed to be fixed to match the new criteria for this year's redistricting process or balancing. But to start and just like totally throw the original map out makes no sense to me. It means we've gone way more complicated than it needs to be. We're, we have solutions looking for a problem that we're trying to consider. And it, and it just seems ill-advised when um, I would have I would have loved an analysis of why we needed to change things in the current map and then look at what those changes could be as opposed to just throwing the current map out and starting from scratch with a lot of these that um, just have all kinds of problems we didn't have before. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. Um, Commissioner Shields? Yeah, just I guess some process questions. Uh, one, I wanna reiterate the need to keep Roseland Hall in Santa Rosa and really the um, Southwest Hall. I also wonder about if we could reach agreement as a commission of what we've heard from public comment, because I think like, and I think, I forget, I don't know if it was Mike, I forget who brought it up or Eric, but the, the trends in public comment, just to be clear and on the same page, even about what, what we think yeah. we're responding to in terms of public comment. And then the issue about the coast, I, I agree with uh, elements that Eric mentioned about a lot of our small unincorporated areas are by in and of themselves community of interest. The one I wonder about, even though I know we got a lot of public comment, and I certainly respect it, about the coast. There's also the argument that someone made about, but that's only a singular vote. So then they're also outvoted a lot of times. So I, th those are the tensions playing in my mind, or it could be outvoted. Uh, and then the historical relationships like Pengrove and Petaluma, for example, and keeping the springs whole. I mean, things that we know jump out to us as residents, as residents of this community and understanding those uh, cultural kind of norms we have. And I wonder how we make sure like I've always loved Elizabeth's recommendation that we have the range beginning from conservative to something, you know, maybe a little saucier and have several of them and be able to defend kind of some of the thinking behind them. And so again, I just wanna agree with many of my colleagues who spoke, there should be something closer to normal. And I think the reference lines of the districts overlaid every time help people help see the changes jump out or not in terms of where we are. Um, and that's my final comment. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Shields. And maybe this is you know, added to the homework that we're going to do in preparation for Friday's meeting. Um, you know, we all represent voices in the community. And I know that we have been commissioners, we commissioners have been meeting with, um, with our, our neighbors um, and meeting with folks in the community too. And, and perhaps, you know, and it sounds like from many of you that um, the maps that we're looking at aren't necessarily expressing the feedback that we have received. Um, so that's another, another part. And maybe this is for, for Friday's meeting and maybe we can, you know, once we get through the formalities of the next meeting, we'll really hone in on the input that we have received to add to, to build upon these layers that we have now. You know, I know that when I when I set about looking at these maps and the and the people that I spoke with, um, I started off with the um, the current districts, 
and modified and adjusted for the reasons that were given. It might, might not have been the steps that the, that the public took when they submitted the maps. Um, so, you know, and I, I said, I tried to look at for more of a Sonoma County match, macro centric um, um, position as opposed to a micro and what might make sense for my particular district. Um, but that, that was my approach. Um, I wanna put that out there because I did want to build on what you were saying um, uh, Sokro, and I also just wanted to capture a really good point that was brought up um, by Mr. Koningshofer about not um, not having an exi um, the existing map um, present in this discussion. I know that's the obvious. Can is the dis is the, is yep. the current map? Um, so it's not not criticizing you in any way and making yep. that not an option. It is an option. Um, yep. um, but I, let me let me just respond quickly. I mean, that's perfectly acceptable. We hear that periodically. <clears throat> it's, you have to sort of separate out when people are just wanting to be comfortable because that's what they know versus and I don't hear that at all here. What I would suggest for the people that want that look at the current districts and do two things. Number one, look at the differences in the population because you have to adjust to rebalance and then come up with a logic or a narrative that defends the communities of interest that are being represented. And then third, make sure that you're looking at or asking yourself the question, are the various populations getting the representation in those each of those districts that, that they should? Um, if you can come up with the narrative that makes sense there and the population, you take a sliver here and there, you don't have to say, hey, we want the existing ones. Mm -hmm. Just submit a new one that does, that is, I like the word, small c, that is a conservative adjustment and that's perfectly legit. If if the committee, if your commission wants that as one of the options, we'll help balance it and make it perfect for you in, in, as one option. Thank you. Let's go to Commissioner Krepke. You're on mute. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go to Commissioner uh, um, uh, Krepke. There we go. No, that was me. Uh, hey, Ken, can you click on the current district shaded? at the top there. Sure. So throughout this entire discussion, what we've heard is, um, you know, areas that want to be kept together and areas that want to be incorporated into other parts. And if you were to zoom in in the, you know, basically where 101 and 12 meet, um, I think one of the things that could remedy this and keep it fairly simple is Rotor Park's comment of, we want one supervisor to represent us. And so you move, uh, I'm sorry, whatever district that is, the blue there up, and um, then you move three over into um, Southwest Santa Rosa. Uh, and then you cover Roseland and that area who wanna be a part of Santa Rosa. It's, it's obviously more nuanced to that with population, but those are two, way, yeah. two things that we can do. Otherwise, if you look at it, the entire Western part of the county um, you know, Fetters, Sonoma, all those are kept together, uh, or eastern part, excuse me, then the western part, Casadero, Guerneville, Forest are all kept together. The fire affected areas are all kept together. Um, and, you know, all these communities that we're picking apart in other uh, maps that we're saying, hey, this should be here, that should be there, are already all together. We just move a little bit, bits and pieces um, on the two things that haven't been addressed yet. Uh, so I just said that that would be an example of a conservative map, map, a minor adjustment, and show that the populations, you know, do what it does and have a narrative that defends that. Yeah, and then um, my other question is, um, would it be more efficient use of our time, not to cut the discussion here short or anything, but in terms of reviewing and then coming back with more comments, but if, if the commissioners were to kind of bullet point some of the things they saw and send it to <clears throat> send it to Yvonne to pass on to NDC and just say like, hey, after reviewing all of these tonight or whatever, so that they can be more prepared going forward instead of, you know, having us all review and then give a bunch, you know, two and a half more hours of comment um, and then trying to rush over the weekend to get it done for next week. If we could kind of give them some some lead up time. so that we Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's a really good idea. My hope was that, you know, we the other point, are there maps tonight that we're looking at? that just aren't gonna make the cut. You know, um, I'll just public map 103, my opinion, but 
you know, we could, we could, we could scratch that if that's not going to be a focus for any of us as something that we would like to put forward. But you're absolutely right. Perhaps we can leave Ken this evening with a couple of areas. He, he, I know he's getting feedback um, from what we're giving him already tonight. Um, but you're right. I don't want us to continue on this process um, on Friday and then end up having to dump a whole lot on, um, on NDC over the weekend to, to scramble. Ken, if we did that and I and combined with my notes and to the extent that those jive and gel, that mm -hmm. would be ideal if you want to send it to Yvonne and <clears throat> capture you, you have to make sure that all you're getting 19 people who are providing feedback. Sure. Not make sure you have to encourage that. And Yvonne just loves it when we give her more work to do. <laughs> <laughs> Joking Yvonne, I know we do appreciate everything that you are doing. Um, okay, let's go to, um, to Commissioner Manieri. Thank you. Um, for the sake of time, I, I, had, I do have a lot of comments, but I like the idea of bullet, po bullet pointing them and um, sending them over. So um, the, the most, I think, pertinent comment that I wanted to share, um, I, I particularly, well, the only map that I saw that was presented to us today that kept Roseland together, um, and my comments are um, particular to, to Roseland and, and Southwest Santa Rosa, um, is NDC 203. Um, that's that's the only map that I saw that that did that. And one um, one observation that I, I made about this map as well is that it actually kept District One of Santa Rosa City Council together, which I think is really important when we're talking about um, representation and boundaries. Um, I, I talked to our Santa Rosa City Council. Um, representative um, and he shared how difficult sometimes it can be to, to talk to two supervisors um, to, to discuss a common issue between two neighborhoods and in this case being Roseland and South Park on the other side of 101. So I like that Roseland and South Park are kept together. Um, another consideration I think as we look at um, unincorporated and incorporated balance is that Moreland to the south of, um, of Roseland has historically been underrepresented, I would say just not represented at all in a lot of issues, and it's because it hasn't been connected to the city because it's unincorporated. Um, and so I would like to see something that includes Moreland in uh, in the District 3 or whatever district is going to include Roseland and South Park. Um, and, you know, in terms of identity, teenagers, students in, in Moreland, they go to the, the schools on the other side of that boundary line. Um, it's historically been left out of a lot of conversation. So I'd like to see Moreland um, included in a, in a map that, in, that is attached to Roseland and South Park and the rest of Santa Rosa. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Manieri. Um, let's see, Commissioner um, Willett. I, I don't have a question. I have oh. my hands down. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Commissioner Rumble. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, uh, Chair. I, a lot of good comments, and it sounds like we're really driving in a, a similar direction as commissioners. I, I really appreciate the, the process point as well about us being able to kind of go away and adjust and, and submit our own maps sending them to Yvonne, right, to make sure that they get highlighted. I'm, I'm a little bit worried that it sounds like Commissioner Martini put it in a map as well, and it got sort of overlooked, not overlooked, uh, um, but not not raised forward. So um, I want to be sure that we're able to, to get those to the four uh, that we send to Yvonne. In the, uh, and then just maybe a little bit more of a technical question. I hope that can be answered. Are we able to take some of these maps that were presented tonight, say NDC 203 or 201, um, and make make adjustments to those maps directly to- Yeah, I, I believe you can. I think you save it as a copy and then you can adjust it to- Got it, to thank you. Like it. You know, and, and perhaps Ken, if, if, if we, you know, and again, we have time, clock is ticking on this too. If right. we have, um, narrative adjustments to the existing maps as well, something that we could feed Yvonne um, um, in preparation for Friday's hearing as well. Yeah, Yvonne, I'll, I'll get yeah. the actual answer to that, Yvonne, and I'll send it to you about okay. whether you can, you can adjust it. Um, 
but 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 barring that, you, you that's exactly right, Mr. Chairman. Is that if if you can't adjust it, then just do what you just did. Just give me a narrative about what you want to change in 201 and 202, 203, and then we'll make the change. We'll make the adjustment. Okay. And Commissioner Acosta. Uh, yeah, just quickly, there were um, just so I can prepare my comments and and be most useful. Um, can we get a copy of that themes page that was in the presentation? I don't see it on the website as part of the agenda packet or if it's in the packet with all the maps of the, the themes that NDC, you started off with that showing kind of the themes that you'd boiled it down to when you created your your five or picked the five maps. If we could get a copy of that so I could look at what you use versus all my notes from reading all the public comment. I wanna make sure that we're covering them all. And the other thing, um, is you said three things um, that you're most focused on with the maps, balancing the population, um, narrative around how we're protecting communities of interest. There was a third thing. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm looking at, thinking of those when I'm looking at the maps. What was the third? Give me one second. I'm about to run out of battery and that would not- Oh no, no. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> that would not be a good thing. Let's see that works. Hoping that worked. There we go. Okay. Um, uh, so, so the, the three things, I'm sorry, say that one more time. Yeah, you had said there were three things like in the narrative. So when you're sort of defending the the, oh. the description or the, the actual changes, the boundaries. So balanced population, how does it protect communities of interest? And there was a third thing. I just didn't get it when you wrote, I was trying to write down when you were talking. Balanced population has to protect community of, of interest. Um, there was a third. Well, was it the logic of the actual changes or? Um, that, that might've been it. I just didn't catch it. And I just want to make sure I'm mindful of those as I'm looking at sort of yep. going back and looking at these again. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Commissioner Shields. Just have a process question for Friday. Will, so will the comments that we've made and collect and the ones that you'll collect, I guess, in the next couple of days, be reflected in new maps that we look at on Friday and it'll be an iterative process every time and you'll boil down to kind of the top five based on our feedback? Well, I sure hope so. That's, uh, it's literally a crunch of resources, but yes. And I would say instead of five, I in, in my mind, I would shoot to, and it's an arbitrary distinction, but three is a lot. Yeah. But if you wanted to give the supervisors five, you could give the supervisors five. But, well, I feel uh, like if we talked about five to narrow down the three for the supervisors. Yes, yeah, and I, we will, I, I'm gonna literally okay. tonight, I'll talk with Doug Johnson and I'll, I'll get, I will have to have a session where I download all of my notes mm -hmm. and then we get some time and then they can, we can spend some time. I can work with him to maneuver some things around to maybe get your next pass at these. So what you might get is 201A. 201, 202A, you know, so you can see where we've made adjustments. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, Commissioner Weeks. Um, thank you, Chair. I am assuming, and this is probably a question for Yvonne, uh, that we will be getting copies of what our fellow commissioners send in so that um, we know kind of what the themes are that our other commissioners are looking at. Yeah, so all public feedback, um, especially in the map format, is, is posted. Um, and so it, that's why it took so long to get them up today because of the feedback that we received, you know, Friday night. <laughs> and yeah. then they had to do the whole thing with the demographic table and everything. And then, you know, so yes. Thank you. They will get posted, but they may not have their names associated with them okay. necessarily. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. In fact, can I, can I su suggest something too? You likely don't want to have names associated with it. Correct. It's a much, uh, much more uh, objective kind of view saying that's why we don't put the people's names on the maps. Um, it just takes away one element that you don't want in the building. You know, Ken, I have, I have a question. So, you know, after tonight and the next day or so, I'm going to be looking at the, the maps that were submitted a little bit closer. And I'm probably going to look, you know, to be honest, I'm probably going to look at all of the maps that, that we've, that we saw submitted. Um, and, and pull out on my own, my own theme. So when it, we want to get these to Yvonne, and I know we want to get them to her soon, we'll get them to her as, as soon as possible. What is your hard deadline to receive all of what we have um, to Yvonne, where she can send it, package it and send it to you um, in preparation for Friday's meeting? 
for Friday. Let's see, today is uh, Monday. Um, I need to, again, I, I, I got to go assess the resources because we got all kinds of maps going on, but that's not your issue. We're here to represent you guys. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you got it to us somehow on, oh, and Friday's meeting is in the morning, is that right? Or um, No, it's also at four o'clock. Four o'clock. It's okay. our Friday afternoon activity. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, if you could get it, you know, Wednesday at noon, let's put it that way. That gives us a, a running shot, you know, an hour and a half. If we're just overwhelmed with feedback, um, yeah. it's going to be harder. My experience with this is when you take the feedback and frankly, some themes come out, frankly, in all the stuff you said, right. there's a lot of themes. So volume doesn't bother me if the themes show themselves. Uh, but if we got Wednesday by noon, that would be great to get comments. I would try not to, you don't need to be too elaborate. I get it. If you say, keep this with that, that's all you need to say. We, we got it. Sometimes you get, there's a lot more stuff, but it, the answer is Wednesday noon, I think would give us a running shot. Okay. And commissioners, we're, we're making up this procedure on the fly. Again, not done this before. So Wednesday at noon is what we're hearing. Um, I just maybe a nod show if that works for those of you who'd like to give some more in, input, some more feedback. Okay. Um, Commissioner Bohr. Uh, in order for that uh, feedback to arrive in a consolidated way to Ken, I think that's going to mean we as com the commission need to get Yvonne the comments by the end of the day tomorrow. If you can get it to be um, on Wednesday at like 1130. That's totally fine. I can, I can okay. compress because I, you know, I okay, can, that's fine. Even better. Thanks. Yep. Yep. Thank you, Yvonne. You're welcome. Oh, miracles. <laughs> Okay, um, so we have we have some homework. I'm looking at the time now. We have 20 till seven. Um, other comments from commissioners or from the public? There is a comment from Fred. So at this time, Fred, I just wanna to check to see if you'd like to raise your hand and give your comment, or would you like me to go ahead and read your comment? I'm allow, I, I uh, went ahead and I muted you, Fred. So if you'd like to make your comment, feel free. Oh, he just said read. Um, okay, so his comments. Um, for NDC, the Sonoma Valley drainage break is just south of Oakmont by Ledson Winery. And then his second comment is just- Hold on, hold on, could you say that again? Sonoma Valley? Sorry, Sonoma Valley drainage break is just south of Oakmont by Ledson okay. Winery. Okay. And then the second one, district number one is currently 60% Santa Rosa, 40% Sonoma Valley. In this breakdown, the Valley can never elect a supervisor because of numbers or catering to Santa Rosa interests, like keeping uh, Madrone Road area south and then going over to Petaluma. That would be a fun new flavor for Sonoma Valley. Okay. One new flavor. I was trying to put this in the chat for you, Ken, but I see you're taking notes as well. So yeah, I am. Thank you. And we'll try to get the recording posted as sooner than later, although it does take a, a day or two, but this is an important one to get up as soon as possible. Yeah, this and, is really good stuff, by the way. Yeah. And we do have another hand raised. Um, Margaret Graham. You should be able to unmute yourself. There we go. Thank you. Um, I've just got a quick question. Is, the, is there going to be any opportunity for the general public to provide feedback on the five maps that were provided? Well, <clears throat> my understanding is that they're going to get posted and the public has, <coughs> has an opportunity to not only come to these meetings, but come to the county supervisors meetings and provide their feedback. That's where the public would provide input. Yeah. So that means then uh, we wait until Friday's meeting to give any to give our feedback, rather than necessarily being able to make adjustments to the fives like the um, the commissioners have the opportunity to. 
it's messy. It's it, yeah, yes, is what I would say. Uh, take public feedback any any way you can. That's the best way to say it. You know, any way and any time. It, right now, these are all open meetings, and and Absolutely. I know the staff is doing what they can to do outreach. Herman, by the way, is doing great work, right. getting around the county, doing a lot of really good work to get people up, um, to pay attention to this. And so, um, yeah, by Friday would be we, we should have a very rich conversation on Friday. And I'll, I'll just I'll just add also that you know um, Margaret you you're welcome to comment on the maps that are now posted on on the website and send your remarks via email um, to the redistricting 2021 email address um, before um, Friday if you if you'd like to, if you prefer that as well. Thank you. That's much very much appreciated. The opportunity to provide public feedback all along. You're welcome. Okay, other comments from commissioners? All right, well, we're going to move on in the agenda. We have some homework. The maps that were presented tonight are there are starting points. Um, Should I stop sharing my screen at this point? Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, so these, these are our starting points. Um, we, we know what we like. We know what we don't like, we know what works, what doesn't work. Um, we know where we might want to focus and give clarity. And we have a deadline now um, for Yvonne. We want to Wednesday 1130, is that what we're saying? At the very latest, um, preferably sooner, um, let's give our feedback to her um, um, very quickly and we will move on in the agenda. Um, we are going to move on to agenda item number four, report out. Um, we included this into our agenda so that commissioners know um, who we have met with in the community or what interest groups or focus groups that we participated in. Um, commissioners, you know, if you want to share um, what you have done over the last, since our last meeting, raise your hand and please share. Um, start with Kirsten, I see her hand raised. Sure, I can be brief. I hosted five workshops with the NAACP chapter and one workshop with the Runner Park Demo Democrat Club with um, Rocio. Most of it all centered on informing folks about the process. Much of the feedback that people gave in that session, they also provided in the respective public comment that we've all received. Um, most people that attended but have not provided feedback, just uh, a bit of overwhelm and intimidation by the process and the tools to um, engage in the process, but feeling a bit more enlightened and mostly focused on getting an understanding of what maps will come forward so that they could try to engage in the public comment portion. But all in all, that was the gist of what I've done. All right, Commissioner Martini. Just briefly, I had a follow-up meeting with the Mark West Citizens Advisory Council. Uh, they were adamant and um, actually voted on and provided a letter uh, that was forwarded to uh, the redistricting office. I hope that you received it. Um, they were adamant that they wanted to make sure that the Mark West Larkfield Wikiup uh, stayed in District 4 and that that community of interest, including the, uh, the existing school board boundaries, uh, be maintained. Okay, Commissioner Rumble. Uh, I've used uh, various chamber committees to help get the word out and, and urge participation. Thank you, uh, Chair Sheffield, for, for leading one of those as well um, uh, at the Chamber's Adv Advocacy Committee. We're also trying to push out as much as possible through the Chamber's communication channels. Uh, the need for the education and need for participation from the public at large, and those go to about 3,000 or so people uh, each time we push it up. Great, thank you, Commissioner Rumble. Other commissioners? Um, well, I will report. Um, I participated in a virtual town hall facilitated by Supervisor Hopkins. Um, I attended an African-American community focus group that was facilitated by Herman G. Um, he's doing a great job. Um, let's see, um, earlier in the month, Commissioner Horta and I participated um, in the public hearing from the Board of Supervisors. 
Um, I also held a couple of map drawing parties in my backyard. We were socially distanced. It was great. Um, let's see, as Commissioner Rumble pointed out uh, last week, he and I presented to the Santa Rosa Metro Chamber. Um, last Wednesday, also moderated a panel discussion with Commissioners Horta and Lange um, that was part of Community Action Partnerships Conversations on Race Series. Um, and also last week, I participated in a discussion um, of the County Committee on School District um, Organization. And at that meeting, um, they gave the tentative nod, I'm a commissioner on, on that as well, gave a tentative nod to keeping the, um, the county school districts aligned with the supervisorial districts. Um, let's see, Commissioner Willett has his hand raised. Yeah, I, I've... Um... We presented with um, Herman Hernandez to our, our MAC here in the Springs um, back in September. And I've had two interviews with um, one with the Kenwood Press and one with the Index Tribune. Excellent. Other commissioners want to share report outs? All right. Let's see. We are now going to shift to agenda item number five public comment on matters not on the agenda. Are there members of the public who are still on participating that would like to speak on matters not on the agenda? So I am seeing no hands raised at this time and no questions or comments in our Q&A chat box. Great, oh, this is so different than school board. Um, <laughs> that agenda item is, is two hours alone. Um, let's see, upcoming meetings, agenda item number six. Um, we have our October 22nd um, um, revising our, our public input, or the maps that we looked at tonight, a continuation of this process this Friday, 4 p.m. Following that, we have um, October 25th, Monday, 4 p.m., same, same bat place, same bat time. Um, all right, looking on, we made it, you guys. It is 10 to seven, still time for dinner. Um, put the little ones to bed if you can. Um, last minute thoughts from commissioners. Okay, I wanna thank Ken again um, for the presentation tonight and leading us through the discussion. I also want to thank um, no longer with on the on the um, on the Zoom um, Dr. Perez for her work around the equity piece. I think that that is a really great focus tool for us to use, and the supervisors I'm sure will appreciate that. Um, I want to thank staff Yvonne and um, and Emily. Thank you so much, um, commissioners. Thank you for your time. Um, we have our marching orders. Let's get some input back to. Um, to Yvonne by Wednesday. <laughs>